Hello and welcome to Admiral's Acmedamia. This class will be how to portray monsters even when you're not playing monster. I am Admiral Ann Cash. Most folks just call me Admiral. Little couple of housekeeping things. Uh, feel free at any point to ask any questions here on Twitch in our chat. You can also go to our Discord on the Kingdom of the Nine Blades and ask questions there in our featured Park Knight uh, text channel. Uh, please also feel free to take a credit for tonight uh, in the same Discord, uh, that is the Kingdom of the Nine Blades, in the featured park. Okay, let's see, we have folks here, yes. Uh, please let me know if at any point you can't uh, see or hear me. Just want to check, everything is good. Okay, I've got... Got the green light from my my tech assistant, so I think we're good to go. So the format of this class, uh, like the last one in the teaching class, uh, will be a who, what, when, where, and why, and ending with Q and A. So that's gonna be our path, so you know how how long we are along the class and what is coming up next. Who, what, when, where, and why. And we'll have the slides up as we go to help you uh, see along and to help with the VARC method of instruction, which is, of course, the visual, uh, text, auditory, and kinetic learning. Um, so let's do this. Uh, and also, thank you very much to everyone that is here, um, everyone that I'm sure will, will be showing up a little later, and um, of course to everyone that is watching this after uh, the live stream, I very much appreciate all of your, your support and um, words of encouragement and, and attendance, I, I very much appreciate this. Okay, so let's get into it. So let's go, slides. Yeah, I'm on the wrong side. Hiya, there we go. So. Uh, how to portray monsters even when not playing monster. Who? Who does this involve? Uh, player characters. There are going to be times of which you can play uh, a monster class um, when you are doing battle games. But that doesn't only mean then. Um, there are going to be times where you can portray monsters when you're not allowed to play the monster class, which we'll go into a little bit later. Um, but you can still portray a monster. So um, we're going to count this as PCs, play characters. Uh, NPCs, if you're in a quest, a RP scenario, uh, you might be just straight up um, playing a monster out of one of the monster books or a custom monster that a QM uh, might be uh, creating for you. Which goes to the next section. Game runners, officers, uh, quest masters, and RP organizers. These are going to be individuals that you're going to want to communicate with, um, and they might be the ones hiring you to do a thing, uh, or the ones restricting what you can and cannot do and when. So specifically for, uh, for game runners, this is going to be very important. This will be the determination of whether or not your player character can play the monster class, or if you have to choose one of the standard classes and simply just portray your monster. Uh, next, right, officer. Officers might have a thing just across the board for the rain where uh, they discourage using monster classes for class battle games. So uh, that's also something to check in with, um, especially the monarch, the champion. Um, those are going to be the big things there. Uh, quest master, again, uh, if you are, are really eager to play monsters in, and you are in a park of which you cannot play a monster during battle games, uh, go to your quest masters, talk with them, um, tell them, I would love to play a monster for, your, for you in your next, uh, in your next quest, and always looking for volunteers for quest, I'm absolutely certain of that. Um, if I ever run anything, I'm certainly always looking for them. Uh, so be sure that you reach out, uh, cause that's gonna be a really good opportunity for you to play monster classes. Uh, also, if you have a particular uh, monster that you really like portraying, maybe you've got the full kit and it's something that you're really passionate about, you can also talk to the quest master and see if uh, any future quests that they do, they might be able to use that monster type in that quest. So always just things to consider, talk with your, your local quest masters and even ones that you would see at events coming up. Um, 
this is very much a cooperative sport, uh, so it's always good to, to talk with folks and figure that stuff out. Okay, um, and then RP organizers, that's sort of the same, uh, same boat. Uh, this might more be like open RP, where uh, it might be spur of the moment, and that's going to be another one of those uh, make sure they're okay with you playing a monster class, um, and if not, again, portray your monster with, uh, and you may be in a situation where you, you can't use any spells, abilities, weapons, uh, right, if you're in some sort of like holy ground um, open RP scenario, where uh, you would be restricted to just portraying your monster. So those are things to things to keep in mind. Uh, the other individuals that you're going to want to interact with with this is going to be other PCs and NPCs and including other monsters. So um, for for other PCs, it's going to be very important that um, if you are allowed to pick a monster, be sure that you pick one that's more balanced. Um, some of them can be really really unbalanced <laughs> um so uh try to get try to get one where where the the power level is is uh more realistic to the balance um make sure that also if you are playing a monster that you communicate with uh, not only your teammates but your the opposing team to make sure that they understand any sort of weird particular things spells or abilities traits that you would get as a monster uh that are not standard things uh, that you would see in a battle game in the other classes, right? Uh, someone might not know what many-legged means, right? Um, some weird things, aquatic, like there's, there's lots of random, um, abilities that only pertain to monsters, and, uh, if folks are not familiar with those, then they might not know how to interact or how to take things, uh, so it's important that everyone just kind of stay, uh, up to date and being able to, uh, communicate. With, with everyone so so no one feels uh cheated or jaded or or upset when uh when you come out and do a thing and you call something they're like that's not even in the rules and they're like it's a monster book <laughs> so it, communication is key um npcs uh if you are playing a monster in a quest where there are monsters right um again they might not be familiar with uh for the quest or the monster that you're playing in that quest. Again, open communication so that everyone knows what abilities you have, so they know how to take them, interact with them. Uh, additionally, it can be a very cool thing uh, to be able to interact with other monsters, right? If I play a werewolf uh, character and I, I've got my head to toe kit on and I'm in a quest and all of a sudden there's a pack of werewolves, oh gosh, the fun RP that will have, right? Uh, I'm going to interact with them in the same like in a very particular way i'm gonna talk and communicate with them in a different way that i would just like a peasant right um so who and what you are interacting with is going to be important so those are fun things just to kind of keep in mind and some things that we'll we'll go into with a bit more detail later on uh are there any questions before we move on also, just a reminder, there's a 20 second delay from when you post uh, and when I see it. So be sure to keep that in mind. Uh, also, don't be afraid to just uh, spam with questions. Just send them out uh, as I will be stopping after each slide uh, just to make sure that I haven't missed anything. If there are any questions, if anyone needs anything repeated or restated or explained in some other manner, more than willing to do so. Uh, just want to make sure that we are all good before we move on. Uh, and this will be for, for each section. So if you have any questions on that section and also further down the line, if you have questions from previous sections, uh, please don't be afraid to ask. Go for it. I love questions. I love answering things. Uh, the whole point of teaching is being able to, to get out that communication and teach. So let's do this. Also, there are no foolish questions. Only foolish answers, which I will give foolish answers at times. Who knows? Let's find out. It's a mystery. Uh, I think we're good and we will move on to what? Okay. What? What? has to do with portraying monsters. Uh, playing monster class, right? Again, uh, this could be in terms of PC or NPC. And uh, this is, there are multiple uh, monster books that are out right now. Um, 
so it would be most likely a monster from from one of those books uh but there's also uh homebrew monsters uh which is basically a term for um making it up <laughs> um you might find a monster that might be like super unbalanced you might tweak it a bit right that's considered a homebrew um if you find if there's a monster type that isn't in any of the books and you, that's one that you really want to uh to do you can create it and work on it and and get it approved by by your local champion um and or monarch depending on the situation in your park um those are considered homebrew so again when you'd be playing a monster class would be uh either in a battle game when you have permission to do so as a pc or in a quest uh where you are specifically an npc or in a battle game scenario where you are an npc playing a monster okay doop, doop, doop. playing standard class again this is when you're in a battle game or battle game scenario or anything that's class related where you do not have permission to play a monster class uh this sort of thing is where you're going to want to you still portray your monster that's the important thing still dressed up still act it but find another class that resembles it uh that has a lot of similar um spells and abilities and traits that your monster class does have so try to find things that are are similar and and you can play those standard classes while still portraying your monster um for example right if I play werewolf and I go to a field and I can't play that monster class, I can play barbarian. Uh, barbarian has a lot of uh, similar or the same um, traits and abilities and even sometimes weapon types, right? I mean, they're allowed to have short swords, so <laughs> you're not going to be able to use um, other things like, like a shield and stuff like that, but again. Um, it is it is a way to get close to it but remember that the the important part is the portrayal so keep that in mind um and then color and non-combatants um again you you don't need to be playing the monster class to portray monsters um for for folks that play color uh you can portray a monster you can bring in that immersion you can go around and role play as a monster without ever attacking them without ever using magic without ever um using traits and abilities and, and things like that uh you can just portray a monster you dress like it you act like it you have interactions right adding that that little bit of color by, by uh, uh increasing the immersion in the space right playing color um and then non-combatants uh non-combatants could be monsters um or monster right portrays um that are in quests that right you'll usually see a gold sash which means do not hit them um those can be non-combatants but they might be npcs uh so those are important to to recognize it's very important that you look for that gold sash because if you see that do not attack them um there's there's a lot of situations where you will have a non-combatant npc um sometimes uh it can be a medical situation uh or someone could be pregnant like that happens um so it's extraordinarily important uh that you you make sure um before you just dive into a thing and start drum rolling everyone um be sure you look around understand who you're dealing with and what is safe um other than that you might also see non-combatant npcs in scenarios scenario battle games this might be things like um like heavy object where the heavy object is a person and you have to um you have to guide them from one point to to the next um that's an example so options are there any questions on that before we move on gonna just quickly check check Let's see some folks have been talking yep also if you do have a question for me please uh tag me in chat because it'll be a lot easier for me to find it um also the same thing with our discord because i am 
uh, monitoring that as well, as well. So featured park night on the Nine Blades Discord. I am checking that out as well. So I think these are pretty self self-explanatory so i'm going to move on to the next slide again if you have any questions at any point need anything restated or repeated or explained in any other sort of way go ahead and let me know no issues no problems they're happy to do it so again anything on the who or the what feel free to ask and chat now when this is going to be important um when quests again um rp uh, open RP scenarios, scenario battle games, and standard class battle games. Again, things that we've mentioned before, um, but these are going to be the times of which you're going to do it. Um, there's also going to be... Uh, goes into the next slide. Where? Um, field days and events. You're going to have opportunities at both of these things. Um, Keep in mind, um, for events, you're gonna have to pack all of that with all your camping gear, your food, your everything else. Uh, make sure you pack all of the, the material components of your monster. So be sure not to forget uh, any like face paint. Uh, if you have that, any prosthetics or wigs or uh, random fur pieces, garb pieces, accessories, uh, masks, all of that good stuff, uh, which we're going into later, uh, it's gonna be a lot. <laughs> um, so make sure that you you go through and pack all those things beforehand. Um, so it can be a little bit easier on a, um, field days because it's a, you can literally put everything on and then go to field dressed as your monster and then come back and get it all off. Uh, it can be a little bit more challenging at events. And also, remember that these things take time to get actually all kitted up, especially if you're dealing with um, prosthetics and, and makeup and all that. Um, give yourself time. Uh, you don't want to start that five minutes before a battle game <laughs> or a quest, right? Okay. Uh, so, yep. Yeah, so, that's sort of a, a dual thing, the, the when and where. Um, these are the types of activities that will happen at an event or uh, a field day. Uh, open RP is, oh my gosh, it, it could happen like at the end of uh, a field day in the middle somewhere in between breaks. Uh, it can happen all sorts of times at an event. Whenever there's free time, that can just divulge into open RP. Um, scenario battle games will be specifically um, things that are planned out because, uh, those take a bit more prepping. Standard class battle games, again, those will be things that are on a schedule. Uh, you'll most likely know those beforehand, so um, those are going to be good ones that you can actually communicate and, and double check with uh, uh, with either the officer or the, uh, the person running the battle game uh, so that you can make sure that you're allowed to play it. Um, the last thing you want to do is get completely kitted up, go to field, and um, go, this is cool, right? And they're like, no <laughs> right again but remember you can portray the class the monster without playing the monster class so even if you do do that you kid up you go and you're told no get a class sash and, and get out there and and you still do it all right just put your all in get into that that role play s situation and and own it do it show them show them what you got and have fun with it Okay, so are there any questions specifically on the when and where? Again, a lot of this is self-explanatory, kind of repetitive. Um, do, do, do. Yes, druids make great elves. That's true. Um, centers can be played as archers. Correct. Uh, there's, there's, there's so many, there's so many things that can be portrayed as standard classes. Um, so yeah, so definitely, uh, just a random side tip. Uh, if, if you are in a situation where, uh, um, you cannot play the monster class, definitely grab the rule book, go look through the classes, see what, what looks closest, uh, and make sure that you're prepped to do it, right? You don't want that, um, that last minute, okay, I guess I have to play druid. I don't even have a sash. Oh gosh. Oh, there's spell balls. Oh no. 
oh, I don't know any of these spells, right? Like, go in ahead of time knowing um, that there's a, a good likelihood that you're not going to be able to play the monster class. Know the backup class for it, and go in with the, the knowledge of what those spells and abilities are going to be, and whatever materials you're going to need to be able to, to pull those off. Uh, so it's going to be important to prep, right? A lot of this is preparation, so that's all part of it. Okay, any questions before we move on? Doop, 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 doop. Checking Discord. Yep. Uh, Davern, if you can hear me, uh, all good, no worries, buddy. Um, feel free to just come and go as you please. Uh, this is all being recorded, so uh, if any folks are coming in late, they can see the video, catch up on anything that they missed, uh, or watch it in sections as they as they please, and any further stuff. Yes, I'm gonna I'm gonna read out uh, Countess Finola's uh, remark because again, this is this is important. Uh, make sure if it's during a quest at an event uh, that you ask well in advance. I'm way more likely to say yes if you give me time and don't spring it on me day of Countess Finola. Correct. <laughs> um, yeah, it's, it's a huge, huge, huge thing. Um, they, they have to account for, for who's in there and um, most quest masters will be expecting uh, that folks will be playing standard classes. So to play a monster could... Uh, seriously put a gear a wrench in, in gears and and mess up stuff where like there's a whole entire thing where uh everyone the whole mechanic of it is everyone has to like trudge slowly through water and if all of a sudden oh yeah no i have aquatic <laughs> okay i got the item we don't have to do this whole part of quest now it's like it can break quests monster PCs can break quests. So it's very important that, uh, number one, if you are a quest writer and you are, um, and you are allowing, uh, folks to play monster classes as PCs, uh, make sure you understand what abilities, traits, spells, blah, 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 right? Lots of repetition. Repeat stuff, repeat stuff. You should remember things if you repeat stuff. Um, it's important for for um, for you to know what those are uh, because you know your quest, right? Um, you'll know what certain things will break stuff, um, right? If, if you see that somebody has aquatic and your whole entire thing is based around them having to walk slowly through water um, or having to hold their breath a certain amount of time, they can only go X, like whatever the, the case might be. Uh, make sure that whatever monster that they're playing isn't going to break your quest. Um, it's always nice to say yes to folks, but sometimes it's not realistic. Uh, so, so if you are able and willing to accommodate, awesome. Uh, just make sure that it's not gonna, it's not gonna topple everything that you got planned in the same process. Okay, and this is a reminder before we go to the next slide. Hydration. Hydration is very important. I'm gonna do this so there's not sponsoring anyone. <laughs> Feel free to, to drink along. Hydrate. Remember, water is good. Um, I do have a question on Discord. Yay. Okay, so quick question. Uh, are you accepting out of kingdom sign ins for those of us turning in from afar? Yes. Absolutely. Uh, anyone that's here that is not part of the Nine Blades, you are more than welcome to sign in for a credit. Welcome to our land! <laughs> um, yeah, so most most kingdoms have uh, the Amped bot, so uh, if you do, you sign in the same exact way. So you're gonna do the, the AB exclamation point attendance thing uh, with your, your orc name if it's linked up. Again, same thing as you you will usually use in your own kingdom on Discord. Uh, feel free to do so in our Discord. Again, um, you can do so on any channel on our Discord, uh, but for for the sake of keeping stuff all in one spot, uh, if you can go to Featured Park Night, 
uh, go ahead and grab yourself a credit. Um, you can also do so at any point during the class, and at the end, I'm going to go on and give uh, last-minute um, uh, last che minute check-in to make sure that folks uh, who are looking to take a credit have uh, before I close down attendance for the night. Uh, we usually close at around 10, so uh, keep that in mind, uh, just in case, like, uh, whatever device that you are watching this on. Um, I will give ample amount of time for folks to be able to sign in directly after, uh, but not too much time. <laughs> uh, we don't want it to be going to the wee hours of the morning, um, just to make sure that folks that aren't attending aren't going to uh, jump in and grab credits if uh, they have not done um, participation in the class or the feature park night for Twilight Peaks night that was before this. Okay, and with that, we shall move on. Doop, doop, doop. Yay! Okay, good stuff, folks. Let's move on. Um... <laughs> Sorry, just saw your one comment. I wonder what brand that orange drink might be. <laughs> I don't know, it's a mystery. <laughs> Okay, uh, we are moving on to the next slide. Why? Why? Okay. Why would anyone do this? Why would somebody portray a monster? Uh, it's challenging. Sometimes challenges are, are fun and exciting. Um, so yeah, challenge yourself. See if you can do it. Uh, it requires a, a type of acting uh, that can be... <laughs> um, far more challenging than look at me, I'm a peasant. A normal humanoid person acting, right? Uh, to be a, a creature, this is Trey, by the way. My buddy Trey. Hey, buddy. Uh, who is a giant distraction to me always during these classes. Uh, <laughs> oh, you're so cute. Okay, sorry. <laughs> Um, it, it's a lot harder to be able to, uh, to portray uh, a creature, a monster, uh, because of the physical acting that is involved. A lot of people will become, like, self-conscious and not want to, you know, get on all fours, howl at the moon, right? <laughs> like, uh, act in, like, in animalistic way depending on what monster you you are portraying right um so it can be quite a challenge and challenges are fun uh see see what you can do see how believable you can be right because there's also that point of um there's a point of acting where uh if you're doing something that's so far from type uh it it can be difficult for you to be convincing right and again that that involves that, that immersion level. Uh, if you can convince them that you are the monster that you are portraying, a, <laughs> that's a heck of a challenge and it's a heck of a thing you can, if you can pull it off. And it's quite fun. Um, so that. All right, again, immersion. Immersion's huge. Uh, when you have this fantasy world, uh, having monsters uh, can really just up the ante in that Oh, wow, this is this is a magical fantasy place. Um, so being able to contribute to that environment, up that immersion, um, that's quite a thing. And being a part of that, dang, that's neat, right? Also, folks, for those that are interested in uh, playing the color class, again, you don't need to fight. You don't need to, to be a spellcaster. You can just act, dress, and interact, right? Upping that immersion, adding that bit of color. That's always an option for you. Okay, so uh, new experiences. Again, if you've been playing this game uh, for years and years and years and you always play a humanoid character and it's always one of the standard classes, uh, why not try something new? You might really like it, it might be fun. Again, challenges wrong side. <laughs> Challenges, immersion, all of those can be new experiences for folks to explore and and get excited about that. 
Um, yes, I'm going to also add that um, I agree with you. Creating weird and new stories as well. Yep. Um, you can be your player character where something goes terribly wrong and all of a sudden is a monster, right? Uh, my character became a werewolf. Uh, that was never the intention of me creating my character. I never thought ever that I would be a werewolf. That was not in the cards for me. Um, but that did happen. <laughs> That did absolutely happen, and uh, I had to very quickly learn how to portray a monster like that. <laughs> Didn't know. I was just blindsided, but oh my gosh, I love it so much. It's so much fun. Um, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go into like the nitty gritty of that and the how. So we're almost there. Hydration in the orange mystery. Orange mystery clip. There we go. Who knows? Could be anything at all. Just a weird mystery monstrous drink of orangeness. Um, so, new experiences. Absolutely. Um, you never know when you're going to get bit by something. Might be a werewolf. Might be a vampire. Might be a weird in fly. Uh, mutant who uh, possibilities are endless, endless. Um, which goes to the next thing fun, have fun. <laughs> Why not have fun? Um, this can be super fun. Uh, just going out and exploring, acting, performing, dressing up. Um, this is what we do, <laughs> right? Uh, we're we are LARPers. We are LARPers. Um, so let's do this. Let's LARP. Um, giving yourself those challenges, upping that immersion, trying new things, having fun while doing it. That's the dream if I've ever heard it. Um, so go for it. Do it because it can be fun. Now, it might not be your cup of tea. And you know what? That's okay. If you try it and you don't like it, don't ever have to do it again. Remember, it's a choice. Um, do not feel pressured into doing it. Don't feel that you have to do it. Just know that it's an option. And uh, options are always things you can explore. Do what you love. Okay. Um, again, right? Uh, the next stuff. Why to actually play a monster, uh, a monster class? Um, when you are able to, right? And let's say if you're, if you are um, a NPC in a quest, right? That might be uh, the only time you ever get to experience playing a monster class, uh, which is something that can be very rare and exciting. So um, the opportunity to, to play something like that, right? Especially if you get cast as a scenario monster where it's like a 10 to one epic creature of complete and utter nonsense. You're the boss at the end of that quest. Um, that's a rare thing. That's not something you're going to see on your everyday field. Um, getting the opportunity to play one of those monsters. If you are into this stuff and you get the chance, take it. Because fun. Fun. <laughs> see, it's funny because it's mirrored to me on my screen. So it's really hard to, to realize that it's not over here what it looks like. And it is over here. Slides. <laughs> So, again, right? Opportunities. These can be very fun, unique opportunities. And if you got them, take them. If you want them. And then other stuff, right? The last thing I'm going to say on the why before we move on to the how. For folks that are looking to become Paragon Monster, which is a thing. You can become a Paragon of Monster Class. Um, again, these, these are the folks that are going to want to... Uh, play play monsters and quests as much as possible right you should always be the first in line to be like you doing a quest do you need a monster hey right um try to explore that try to explore different monster types um not just one right all the time uh play around see what you can do right um other than that 
understanding that there's going to be a lot of opt points where you're not going to be able to actually play the monster class. These are really, really good opportunities for you to still portray your monster, right? You pick a standard class that fits best with it, with the types of abilities and traits and spells uh, that your monster class has, so that you can show your knowledge of, of those abilities and how you work with them strategically. Uh, also getting your, your name out there, um, being able to be like sort of that brand recognizability, right? Um, I always imagined uh, Paragon being um, this thing where you can walk onto a field without a sash and everyone knows what class you're playing. Um, now, and that's not just right. Some of that is, do you look the part, right? Um, but at some points, right, there's character choices and you might not look like a stereotypical this or that. Um, but other than that, it's also what you are recognized as. If you're playing a different class every single field, um, they're not going to know which one you're trying to paragon, and they're not going to know which one to associate you with, right? If you wear the same garb for every single class and you change your class every single field, uh, they're not going to know which one you're going for. Uh, especially if you're on a hard push, it's going to be very, very um, confusing if you're not playing uh, the class that you're trying to paragon when you're on the hard push. So just things to kind of think about. Um, but again, if you are still going with that portrayal so you're going to be playing that monster class as many opportunities as you can but you're still going to portray that monster at every opportunity you have when you can't play the class itself um, that is going to help folks recognize you as a monster right they're going to know that's the person that's always going to have the whole kit they're going to have these different masks, these different makeups and prosthetics, and they're gonna be so prepped to just flex their acting ability and fit into whatever monstrous uh, character that is required of them. But also maybe it's just like their main character is like, like a goblin, and they just are so so invested in in the rp as their character you know their goblin character they are completely head to toe very recognizable as a goblin um in my my old my home park um back in the day there used to be this giant thing where it's like rights for goblins and they just like every single time we had a quest it would become this this whole entire thing where you knew that if you were NPCing as a goblin that uh, you might as well ha like make yourself some picket signs because it would be part of the quest always. They would just divulge into picket, you know, sign fences, uh, things where it's just always trying to get equal rights for goblins. Um, but on a side note, there should be equal rights for goblins. Consider that. Um, but yeah, again... Have fun! Immersion! Play it when you can. Um, but again, remember that brand recognizability. Uh, if you are not known for for just being yourself on the field all the time, you're known as a creature, a monster. Like, every field day, every event you go to, yeah, I'd look at that person for Paragon. Stuff to remember. Again, we'll vary between um, Paragon to Paragon and Kingdom to Kingdom. Consult your circle. <laughs> okay. Does anyone have any questions so far before we move on? So now we're going to get into the how. Gonna just double check our Discord. Do -do -do. Okay, good, good. Whew. Okay, remember to hydrate. Hydration, very important. Does not need to be a, a, an orange mystery. Um, it, can, it can be a blue mystery or, or a purple mystery or, or just clear, clear mysteries. Mystery. Okay. If we are good on this, 
checking. Let's move on. All right. This is it. Home stretch. Um, how? Part one. So, the portrayal. Okay. This is very important. Um, posture. <laughs> Uh, a lot of folks don't consider this one. This is probably one of the most important ones. Um, if if I am playing an elf, a a high noble class elf, right, high court, uh, I am going to sit and stand with proper posture. I'm going to be upright. My neck will be up. My chest will be out. I am not going to slouch. I'm not going to be like, yeah, head of the elves, right? That's not going to portray that type of monster. So understand that your posture is going to affect things. If I'm a werewolf, I am not going to do a courtly posture when in werewolf form. I'm going to be, right? Think of, think of the anatomy, right? Think of the anatomy. Uh, a werewolf is, is probably going to have more of a bent leg, right? Because of how they're their knees do this weird thingling, like a canine, right? Um, their are their back is almost like arched because of like the muscle structure that's on their back, which is going to give them uh, a more of a bent over thing, right? Uh, their attack is going to be of their claws, so they're going to be ready, almost right to, to pounce. So, right, they're not going to just be like suck werewolf, right? That's not going to be how you're going to have a posture as a werewolf. Think of the anatomy. Think of the anatomy at all times. So look at each type of, of uh, monster and think about how they will stand, how they will sit, how they will lay, how they will walk. Uh, how will they just stand in a neutral position? Uh, and I'll get into the last uh, thing later, but we're going to get into also how will they fight. So that's coming too. Uh, so again, look look at um, look at the monster you're gonna play. Think of logically what um, what physical position that they're gonna have. Um, go to go to uh, go to the the internets. Um, look up the anatomy of those creatures. Actually, see their silhouette. See what their their bone structure and their muscular. Sec um, structure is like to actually get a better idea of of how to mimic those sorts of shapes um and i will explain on the next slide uh how to do that with your costuming but again posture um next will be facial expressions um so physical acting um is difficult <laughs> can be very difficult um there are some monsters that are not going to speak they are they are not going to speak common tongue they will not just talk to you some of them will be nonverbal. uh they might growl or grunt or make all sorts of strange unusual noises um and that might be it uh so to communicate you'll have to do it with your facial expressions Right. If somebody, if if I'm if I'm a wolf and um, somebody comes near me and I'm threatened, I'm not going to be like, no, I'm going to be like, right? I'm, right? Right? Um, play around with your facial expressions. Know what they, right? Understand what excited will look like. Concern. Fear. Surprise. Sadness, excitement, <laughs> um, angry, fierce, right? Look into a mirror. Mirror is going to be your best friend on a lot of this, which I'm going to explain in practice. Um, play around with it. Play around with it. Um, right again, if you're if you're playing um, a courtly elf, right? I'm just going to use this as an example. Um, you might think of mm, snooty, right? Keep those, right? If you're playing a, a creature that's more just like apathetic, like, right? Consider that what your face is going to look like. Actually, actually look into it, um, because it will it will affect your portrayal. Um, 
a lot of this is um, the posture, the facial expressions, and the vocal and reactions will um, will be your your key thing of making folks believe it. Uh, if you if you have one of these things missing, it can break the immersion. Um, it is very hard uh, in theater to convince your audience that you are someone that you're not. And once you break character, uh, it breaks the trust that you have with them. And it's very hard to get back after that. Now, when you're in a, a thing like a LARP and you break character, uh, these are folks you're going to see every single week. So getting them to, to be reinvested and convinced and trust you to be that character that's going to be harder. It's going to be harder because they're going to see you a lot more often than a one-time audience. So things to consider, right? You have these things, you, these tools at your disposal, use them. Um, and again, also, this is a lot of, if you want to up your game, uh, if, if you're going around and, and you are trying to get Paragon Monster or even just um, somebody who I, maybe wants Paragon Color and does so as, you know, uh, through Monster Portrayal as their character, um, it's going to be, right, you're going to get points where you're like, I don't know what I'm, what, what more do I need to do? I can't seem to, like, get any better with this. Uh, go into this. Go, ugh, go, go into this, right? Um, tweak it. See how far you can go. Up your game in every aspect of these things. Um, make conscious decisions. Um, so, right, the next thing is is vocal. Again, if um, if you are playing a creature, um, a monster that is nonverbal, um, but can make grunts and growls and snarls and barks and meows and all sorts of um, different vocal communications, do it. <laughs> Go for it. Um, but also commit. That's going to be a big thing. Um, if I'm again, right, if I'm, if I'm a werewolf, um, and I'm not a, a common tongue speaking werewolf, um, if I go bark, 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 that's not very convincing, right? Um, right, like snarl, like, right, like get into it, make the noises, commit to them, um, right? If, if, if I'm if I'm a majestic goose creature, uh, I do a honk, 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 honk. They're not gonna believe it because I'm not believing it, right? Honk, 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 honk. Honk, right? Whatever your version is, just commit to it. Um, but that's going to be the biggest thing. And it could be the most uncomfortable thing. Um, communicating in that way, you can get self-conscious. But it's okay. It's it's okay. Try it out. See how it feels. Um, but also understand you're going to get up in the respect area if you commit to it. Um, so the more uncomfortable it might feel for you, will probably give you more cred, <laughs> right? Uh, they might just respect you so much more because you went out on a limb and you went for it. Okay. Um, doop, doop, doop. Vocal. Good. Okay. Um, also, um, this also runs into accents, too. Uh, if you do have uh, a verbal, uh, monster, uh, consider tone, consider, um, pitch of voice, right? Um, if it's gonna be a low-sounding creature, or if it's like, hi, I'm a I'm an elf, right? Like, right? If I'm, if I'm this tiny little, like, uh, like Christmas elf, um, I'm not gonna be like, sup? Right? Like, that's... No, I mean, it could be very funny if you do that. And, again, whatever you do, commit to it. 
but like the stereotypical one would be a more high high pitched elf, right? Welcome to the North Pole, right? That's gonna be more of what you're gonna have in in your head for that most often than not. So consider uh, your vocal range, consider your pitch, um, also consider your volume, right? There might be uh, some fey creatures that are very quiet and <laughs> yes, okay, right? Are, are more like uh, playful, but timid and quiet, right? There's gonna be other uh, monsters, creatures like, hey, get out of my farm, right? Like who knows, whatever the things are. Uh, it's gonna be different from, from each monster. So consider your volume, your pitch, your accent, if you have one, right? You might also wanna play with some accent stuff just to make it a little bit less of your talking voice. Um, just a little bit of a tweak here or there, um, just to, again, disassociate from yourself. The more that you can convince others um, that what you're doing is, um, is not you, right? Trying to, to separate from you as much as possible uh, is going to make that immersion and that believability higher, right? Um, because they have to be convinced it's not you. Um, for them to mentally accept that you are that monster, right? Again, can be very difficult. So uh, keep all those things in mind are going. Now, uh, some other thing to consider is uh, censoring and reaction. Um, if, again, I'm gonna use werewolf because I'm a werewolf. Um, if I touch silver, it's going to burn. Uh, so if I, if I hold this and it's silver, oh, wait, I'm actually wearing something that's silver. Right. So I'm just going like this and I have no reaction whatsoever. That's not really believable. All right. If I'm ah, right. Because silver burns werewolves, right? If I touch that, I should react to the burn. Um, if, if I'm a werewolf and I eat a piece of chocolate, I might feel very sick to my stomach. <laughs> Right? Um, just consider those things to play around with, right? Um, if I'm a vampire and I see somebody's holding a wooden stake, I should feel nervous. I should be concerned, right? Depending on the type of vampire you're playing, of course, I know. Um, but again, right? If you see things that you have uh, particularly particular weaknesses to or um those are easy ways to to kill them if i am playing some sort of snail creature and somebody has a, a shake salt like a thing of salt and they're just throwing it around wildly i should be terrified i should be so scared that i'm going to run away as fast as i can which is gonna be really slow and amusing but right like no no <laughs> right like Play into it. Understand what salt will do, right? To to my creature type. I don't want to get touched by that. I want to live. Run away. Mm. Play around with it. Understand what your your monster type will react to. Um, understand what will entice them. Uh, if they have any compulsions, stuff like that. Um, right for again, if you have like uh, a werewolf their hearing's gonna be really good. So if somebody has a high-pitched thing or blows a whistle or, um, or talks like, right? Like you, you should be able to hear stuff. You can, right? There's gonna be certain things where, right? You can be distracted quite easily by things, by hearing things, right? Or be like, oh my God. Like, like if you have a dog and, and there are fireworks, uh, they have a very specific reaction, right? Uh, if if there are loud noises and and your character as the monster is not very brave, they might have a fear response to such things, especially if they have particularly good hearing. So consider that in your portrayal. Um, anything that has something that they would react to, figure out what all those things are. Um, and then portray them again, right? Adding to that to that immersion level of your portrayal, your posture, your facial expression, your vocal um, presentation, your 
your sensory reactions are all part of that. So consider all of that in your portrayals. Um, and then the big thing is going to be practice. Um, for, for those of us that are like really big into kinetic learning, a lot of this is going to be physically doing the thing. Uh, it will get better the more you do it. And also, um, you can try out things and go, I didn't like that. I would like uh, to see if I can find an alternate way of doing this, right? You might go out and try a voice and it'd be like, oh, that was really hard to, to keep up for a couple hours. That was uncomfortable. It was a bit of a strain on my vocal cords. Um, it didn't sound good. I wasn't getting a good reception from it. The next time you go out, that might sound completely different. Um, and that's okay, right? It's okay to try different things, have your character develop and, and um, explore. Explore this place, uh, explore your, um, your options. Um, but a big thing for, for even before you get onto the field and you try these things and experiment is a mirror. Legitimately, physically walk, talk, move, right? Um, try to, to do these things and look at a mirror. Look at what you look like when you're doing it. Actually see if, if it's actually coming across, if you can actually tell. Um, just practice. Actually practice. Do it through, explore options, and then um, make those decisions. But actually do them. Uh, do not, do not um, wing it. <laughs> um, don't just go out into the field never having looked up any of it and going and ah, I'm sure it'll be fine. And then just be like, I'm just talking now. Okay. Didn't think any of this through. Oh, nope. Now I have to commit to this. Oh crap. No, I really wanted to do that. That was, nope. That was mm, right. The more preparation you have, the more comfortable you're going to be with it. The more you're going to be happy with it. Um, the more it'll be convincing. Uh, there's so many things, so many things. Um, it's going to be better if you, you think it through, you plan it through, and you practice it beforehand. So that's the random tip from me. Um, yes. Yes. Look at this. Uh, the Fubard. Absolutely right. Uh, they can come and practice on many of the RP nights on the Discord. Come to the Kingdom of the Nine Blades Discord on Thursdays at 8 p.m. No, 6 p.m. 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, uh, where we do quests every Thursday. Uh, because the Fubard is is a madman. Um, right? Not just that, but there's, there's other opportunities to do so. There's other discords. There's other parks that are running things right now. Um, Yes, on random Sundays, uh, when Bonnie the Broken Wench uh, runs open tavern nights, or randomly, um, sporadically, whenever there's uh, cancellations of things, or, or who knows, open RP can can become just anytime, anywhere kind of things. Um, so it's it's important to uh, look around, see who's doing what, um, but try stuff there. That's such a good place to actually experiment. Um, we have one player um, who has tried a whole bunch of different uh, creatures and monsters and characters and uh, has been switching up a bunch and exploring them. And in each random scenario, right, uh, is exploring, is absolutely exploring. And I think it's fantastic. I think it's just really fantastic. Um, so to be able to actually go and try these things out, this is a good time to do that, right? Before before we get back out in there, play around with it. Try voices, try, um, try some backstory, try to figure out um, interactions and, and reactions. Um, see what you like, right? Try different different types of monsters during this time. Um, try different portrayals. Explore. Just explore. Um, because at that point, if you, if you find something you really like, then you can deep dive, right? Then go for the whole, the whole nine yards. Go for the full, uh, costume, makeup, hair portrayal. Do the whole thing, right? What a great time to be able to craft those items, right? Go, go to these RP scenarios. Try out things. Settle on stuff, pick the monster type you like, then 
go for the garb and you're going to be 10 steps above everyone else by the time we're back open. You're going to be so prepared and so ready and so gearing to go uh, because of using this time wisely. So don't be discouraged by this time. Use it as this really weird silver lining. Um, make the best of a bad situation. Okay. Um, doo -doo -doo. From there, we will go to how part two costumes, right? There are different ways you can do monster costumes a million different ways. So we're gonna explore just a couple of ways to, to go about this. Masks. Masks are really, really great. Um, they can quite easily change your, your whole, your whole, um, facial structure. Um, your nose, your eyes, your mouth, your eyebrows, right? Your, your cheeks, your whole shape of your mouth. Um, shape your mouth, wow. Blah, blah. Face, shape, all of the shapes, um, your silhouette, right? All of those things um, can be changed with masks. A mask can be a very quick and easy way to do that without having to do makeup and prosthetics and stuff like that. Um, so I'm actually gonna, and you can customize them. That's gonna be a big thing, uh, which I'm gonna show you some examples actually. Um, so this was something that uh, Woonjo created for um, his character, uh, Gumjaw. Gumjaw. Uh, this was originally a devil mask. A red devil mask. Um, you can see that it is not that anymore. <laughs> right? Um, now he did some really cool things. Uh, he painted everything. You can see just the different highlights and lowlights and um, right, the shading that he got. And then the texture, right? Um, this was a completely smooth mask, so it is completely texturized now. It also has this, um, this cool meshing on, on the eyes as well that you can see pretty good out of, um, but will hide your eyes a lot better. Um, that also helps with things. Um, sometimes your, your eyes, uh, doesn't, don't fit particularly well, uh, with the character that you're portraying, so it can, um, it can knock that immersion down just a smidge. Um, I'm going to show you what this actually uh, looks like um, doo -doo -doo. with the rest of his garb. Uh, right, you can see that he wears a um, a morph suit. So all of that green that you're seeing, that's not body paint. That's a morph suit. So all of that's already on there. All of the, the the shading and the highlights and the different coloring, the wraps that are on there, right? That's all just a morph suit. So he doesn't have to deal with, you know, trying to get his skin green every time that he plays this. Just wears the mask, wears the morph suit, and then puts a couple of pieces on top, right? Adding with some accessories, and there you've got a monster, right? It looks super legit. And how he portrays it, it's a convincing portrayal. Um, right? And all that started when he found a red, smooth devil mask. Right? Augment things. Um, now, for my own, right, I play a werewolf. Um, whoop. So this is not even remotely close to what I started with. Uh, this used to be a gold mask. Uh, it was all solid gold color. Uh, there was no bottom teeth and no fur. None at all. Um, so I tailored, um, in like custom fit and sewed all of these fur pieces. Uh, and I painted the whole thing. Uh, painted uh, different, again, highlights, lowlights, uh, different colors for the different pieces, right? Again, using, like, different coloring and shading uh, to get more of that teethy look. I, I made a, like, I added a bottom jaw with a chin piece. Um, but this whole thing is multiple pieces. It looks like one, one thing, and it's not. Um... Also, things you might not notice in here, right? Because the mask only went to here. Um, you could see all of my skin there. So I made my own bell clava. 
Um, so I'll take it apart and I'll let you see this. Um, so first thing, right, is that. And then I have this cowl, which then goes down and I can stuff that into my shirt. So I have all of my skin, right? Uh, again, it is tailored, so it's it fits me like a glove, uh, which I've got these large clasps in the back. And how I did it, right, the fur overlaps, so you can't really see through it. And it's lined inside, <laughs> which is really nice. Um, got my lining, so, um, so I don't have to deal with the any sort of possible itchiness from the back of the fur, right? Um, and then how I have that tailored, it's going into any of those um, exposed areas, right? The chin is, is built up um, to cover mine and to, right, uh, connect with that bottom jaw piece, right? And then I made a balclava, right? Um, it's a couple of layers thick. Um, but super stretchy material, um, four-way, uh, four-way stretch, so difficult to, to, to deal with, but super worth it, right? And I, I tailored that to myself, uh, hand-stitched the eye holes, uh, so I get a little bit closer to my eyes, um, without it slipping because it is more than one layer, so that's all hand-stitched in there, uh, but yeah, and it's super, it's super, super breathable because of the type that I used. Um, so this is how I avoid having to blacken my face because folks don't do blackface, okay? Please avoid. Um, I cannot express that with any more just, please do not. <laughs> um, so this is how I, I hide the other face parts of my skin showing. Um, without having to use uh, any sort of super offensive makeup. Um, so the only thing that I do do is uh, eyeshadow. I do eyeshadow and, and liner, right? Uh, and I just uh, black out my eyes, which is a common thing that uh, you see in all, all mask type things. Uh, if you've ever seen Batman or literally any superhero movie where uh, they have a mask part that goes over their eyes, uh, when they're not wearing that mask, the whole thing is just black. They just black out the eyes. Um, so then you just see mostly just like the white of the eyes. Um, so I'm also going to show you what my thing looks like all put together. So this is my werewolf garb that I made. Um, doop, doop, doop. Sorry, I have to ready real quick. All right. So you can see where that part of my eye is blacked out, where you can only really see the white of my eye, um, but the rest of it is all um, that balclava and then eyeshadow, just black eyeshadow. And you can see the gap where that teeth mark was, right? You can't actually see my skin, even though it would be showing uh, with the way that that mask is made. Um, also, fortunately, because of how that mask is made, um, having that open section actually makes it super easy to breathe in that thing. Uh, so that's actually super convenient that it is oddly shaped in that way. So. There you go. Um, and that is very different than how I look, right? Um, <laughs> that's... <laughs> right? Um... I, I hope that it's a convincing look and different enough from me. Um, so, right, in, in what I do when I'm, I'm portraying that, I'm going very much into physical acting. I am, I am not standing up straight. I am, I am actually, you know, hunched over. I am, I've, I've got, you know, my knees bent. I'm playing around with that, right, that claw-like movements. And I'm gonna go into silhouette and what I did with with that um because there's a trick to it <laughs> um but again right um we're gonna go a little bit into makeup and prosthetics um these this is some other options that you have as well depending on the um the monster that you're doing uh you're 
mask might not be a realistic thing. It might not be believable. Um, and there's other options, right? Especially if you, if you really rely on your facial expressions to emote, um, right? Again, I'm gonna, I want to give a throw out here to the Fubard. Um, there is one character in particular that he does fantastically. Um, nameless. <laughs> we call him Nameless. Uh, he doesn't speak. And he has a mask that covers his whole face. And how he moves and performs and emotes in just how he moves, just every bit of what he's doing, it's such a captivating performance. And you just are like, oh, <laughs> like every time you're like, oh, just say something. Oh, no, he's so creepy. Oh, um, it's so good. It's just so good. Uh, but it's a very difficult form of acting. You you have to be able to really perform with the rest of your body to pull that off. Uh, because you are losing all of your facial expressions. You have to sell and commit with the rest of your body and your physicality to be able to pull off a monster like that. So definitely make sure that uh, if you are going the mask route, understand what you won't be able to use here. Um, so the other option for that, if, uh, you want to rely on more, um, for more facial expressions emoting, if you're doing something, um, where the portrayal is, you need to see your face, um, you can do prosthetics and makeup work. Um, I'm going to show you real quick. Um, so that's me. Um, uh, that is me. Uh, that is me as the witch in Into the Woods. This is Act 1, Witch from Into the Woods. Uh, so, I was, uh, I did, so at Keep Olympiad, I did a short, um, skit thing. I, I basically made the whole, uh, I made Into, Wo into the Woods into, like, a ten minute show, uh, that encapsulated most of the story, um, in a ten minute thing, um, we're focused on the first act. Uh, so for that, uh, wearing a mask, I could not emote properly through that, right? Um, so I did prosthetic work. So uh, for for her, I used a prosthetic nose. Um, things to, to also consider when, when using prosthetics. Uh, first and foremost, have some sort of foundation or... Um, or even like if you're doing a different skin tone, like if you're doing green, um, put that color on your prosthetic before you put that prosthetic on your face. Um, you will not be able to manipulate it once it's on you because it'll it'll deform and it will shift and move and it won't have enough structure uh, to be able to to put the makeup on afterwards. So whenever doing prosthetic work, you um, you also need some sort of foundation if you're doing even just like skin tone like I'm doing here. Uh, you need to have some sort of foundation so that you can blend um, the prosthetic to your real skin. Or else it will look very, very clear that you have a prosthetic on. So it's extremely important. You paint um, or color or whatever, uh, right? Put your foundation um, on the prosthetic before you put it on your face. And um, don't put don't put the rest of that on your face um, because it will not stick, right? If I go full green, I put the green on my nose and then I put the nose on, the green underneath will prevent it from sticking because it will be too oily now. So the step is, uh, again, we're going to say green for this. Um, green the nose, glue it on, uh, usually using like spirit gum. Uh, and then you blend it and put green everywhere else. Again, also, if you're doing any sort of highlights or low lights or things like that, you're going to do that all before you put it on your face, right? So for her, I, I accentuated, uh, the curves in her nose, right? It did that. I put some, some crinkly bits. Um, and then I also used, um, I used liquid latex to um to flatten the line a bit because uh they can have very harsh straight edges uh so it's good to um 
to smooth those out and you can use right liquid latex it works for that right and then you just again you put the foundation over top to blend it yeah so all right other things that i did um I blackened my lip i uh i used this uh this special stuff that uh like yellowed my teeth <laughs> um it's like this paint on um stuff that you can get at costume shops um, they have a bunch of cool things. They have uh, stuff for scars and um, and teeth and stuff like that uh, that are paint on things. Uh, word of caution for the the scar stuff. Uh, it it's like a band aid, so like they're really like you you have to rip it off. Um, so sometimes it can become a real scar. <laughs> um, I I tried it once. It looks really cool. What it does is basically like with your skin, kind of like causes like an indent um but like it can be very sensitive on your skin so if you like rip it off um you might actually uh might grab a bit of your the top layer of your skin um so you just gotta be super super careful with that i have yet to find um, a remover for it um right other things like spirit gum have specific removers that you can use um so yeah yeah that other than that, right, uh, other things that I did with her, um, I had a prosthetic chin as well. I actually had a prosthetic forehead that had a bunch of wrinkles. Um, and again, right, I, I put shadowing here just to look like, you know, bags under my eyes. I, I went with a whole bunch of other stuff just to accentuate lines, um, to make her look old and, and really gnarly looking. Um, and then I had like these really long, uh, black, um, fake nails that were like claw-like that I used. Again, being able to use all of those things in my portrayal and how I moved, right? Um, my physical posture and all of that. Um, and then wig work. Um, that is a wig. That is not my real hair. Um, all of that was, I, I pre- did all of that on a on a wig stand and um then again ratted it up a bit um to make her look a little more unkept yeah so that's an example of prosthetic work Whoop. right options so many options um just double check make sure no messages cool um so those are things. Uh, do not try to do prosthetic work um, the first time right before a quest. Um, practice that. Uh, make sure that you have um, the type of uh, glue that you want to use, right? If you're using spirit gum, if you're using uh, just liquid latex, if you're using uh, even some stuff you can, you can use... Um, like a glue stick for certain things like if you're doing uh also uh if you're doing stuff where you're like you're doing an accentuated uh eyebrow uh you can smooth all of that down and paint over it uh your actual eyebrow if you use uh like just school brand like old school uh um glue stick Actually, look out of uh, drag stuff, actually. Uh, really explains it really well, so if you ever look up anything like that, um, yeah, they've got some really cool stuff. <laughs> Lots of tricks. Um, but yeah, other than that, right, make sure that you never use uh, any sort of glue um, or sticky substance if you do not have a remover. I cannot stress that enough. Please do not attempt if you do not have the solution to remove the thing that you are sticking. Um, y you're gonna have a bad day. Soap and water is not gonna cut it. It will still be sticky. It will be miserable. You will be very sad. <laughs> Don't put yourself into a sad position because you have permanent sticky on your face because you didn't have the remover. <laughs> you managed to get the prosthetic off and it felt like a band-aid ripping off of your nose and it's just uh nope it's still sticky no matter how much soap you scrub and scratch into it that stick just doesn't stop. Get a remover. <laughs> get a remover before you use it. Um please trust me personal experience I've made that mistake um 
and and quite foolishly so i thought i had the remover and um the cap wasn't fully taut so it was like knocked over and all of the contents had been removed so as i go and i pick up the bottle and i go to remove my prosthetic nose that i was using uh i i managed to get it off but i couldn't get the sticky off and it was a miserable miserable time um so that's a real thing <laughs> that is a real thing uh that can happen i guess that's sort of a side note if you got anything with a bottle make sure you cut that cap and it's like on there good because if it's over like this it's all gonna pour out and did i just do that with literally uh the orange the orange uh liquid of mystery on my bed the other night i sure did sure did worst thing ever um yeah didn't cap the mystery uh, the mysterious thing and it started pouring onto my bed so that's a thing fun fact um cap cap your lids <laughs> this is real don't be me don't fall into my mistakes <laughs> why such a clean up mess but you clean it up it's all good now so <laughs> but yeah avoid avoid those things if you can so um, yeah, like it, every, every type of, um, spirit gum thing, every brand is, is different, right? Some things are going to be like absurdly sticky and some things are going to be like, this doesn't even hold on, right? Um, some, some things are, are cheaply made, um, and they won't even stick on your face. Um, so it's important to do some research, uh, look at what brands really work and what don't. Uh, you wanna make sure that you have a good solid uh, stick, especially uh, understand that heat will absolutely affect it. So if you're playing in a very warm, humid temperature, that thing's gonna slide right off your face. Um, especially if you're doing something where uh, you're exercising, you're running around and you're fighting um, sweat uh, perspiration, all of that is gonna make stuff slide. Um, so you gotta be really, really careful about that. Um, liquid latex is actually really good, um, to help with that kind of process, because once you already have the stick, right, uh, you use the liquid latex to help, um, even out those lines. The lick, the liquid latex is gonna, uh, do better, um, more often than not. <laughs> may vary again there are types of really cheap uh liquid latex that doesn't work so well it's dealer's choice um but yeah also scars liquid latex is really good for scars um my main character uh has facial scars she has like a line down this way a cut across her cheek and a little nick here from the continuation of that line uh and i i use liquid latex uh so it, it's it's very quick like it's an easy process um you just put it on you wait for it to dry a little i literally will get like a, a toothpick just to like uh indent the line so it looks like there's been like a cut uh just wait for that to dry i get some some red um makeup thing i have like a, a thing where it has like all these different colors stick it in right that's it it's really easy peasy because it's a uh, i get the kind that's skin tone um there's there's like super pale and white also um so again it depends on what you're looking to do um if you're looking to do like colors and stuff you might want to get the white just to have more like a, a clean palette especially if like you're gonna do the rest of your face in a, like a like a white ghostly like or skeleton um face painting stuff um you can use the the white to help with that it's up to you it's very very much a personal preference sort of thing uh moving on from there um just going a little bit into the oh gosh sorry one more thing one more thing there are also tricks depending on the type of prosthetic that you're using where you do not use any sticky stuff whatsoever also some folks are allergic to latex some folks are allergic and don't know it so before you use um spirit gum before you use uh liquid latex before you use any sort of makeup you do it on your hand first just a little patch on your hand to see how your skin reacts to it uh if you get hives 
immediately remove it and do not use it on your face. Understand that that's not an option for you. Go into other options, look at other things, look at masks, right? Understand what, um, what your skin can handle because there's going to be certain uh, things that will affect people extremely negatively. They'll have bad allergic reactions uh, and that's not an option for them. So um, you don't want to find out that you have a latex allergy after you've done a full face prosthetic um, thing. <laughs> um, please avoid. <laughs> uh, so again, safety first. Make sure you, you pick a little... A little section of your hand to test any sort of um, makeup on even regular makeup uh, to be frank um, some things depending on what uh, chemicals or materials um, that they use in there you always want to do a little test beforehand to make sure that uh, you do not have any sort of allergic reactions yeah right I that was, uh, the, so the allergic reaction thing is, is something that they, uh, they, they teach you in theater. Um, because, uh, in a lot of theater courses, you, you have to get trained in doing, uh, your own makeup and prosthetics. Uh, so that's, that's usually the very first thing that they do with you is that they, they run you by and, and have you, uh, do, do tests, right? You'll, you'll put like, um liquid latex or something on your like the little bit of your hand and you'll wait like x amount of minutes right maybe 10 minutes even sometimes like half an hour depends on you know what they're looking to do uh and then if you have no reaction right they clean it off and then all of a sudden you know your face becomes a palette for the next you know <laughs> how many hours depending on how uh in depth you're going um but there is a cool trick um especially for folks that do elf ears um you can get the the pre-made elf ears um that you slip on and what you do is uh there's you can buy these um these like cuff earring type of things um that aren't piercings they're just cuffs like there's metal that you that you clamp right you just press it uh and those will hold your ears on um you can also make your own right uh that's what i did i ah i wish i'd grabbed it <laughs> regret um because that's what i do with mine i don't even bother um i don't even bother using uh liquid latex or uh or glue i literally just clamp them and i don't have to worry about anything sticky which is really nice <laughs> um but yeah i have like a thing where like i have a clip here and i have a clip here and it's just like wire that i wrapped around like this and then did this and wrap around so it, it looks like that, right? Just a fancy version of this. Um, and then I made one for for the in, more inner part of my ear, right? Just a clip here. And then for the outer part of the ear. Um, so I have two just like fancy little wire wrapped clamps for here and here. And uh, yeah, with that, you don't have to worry about any uh, sort of uh, sticky, gross stuff. <laughs> Right. It's also, even though you might be able to wear, you know, liquid latex and um, spirit gum and stuff like that, you may not want to. Um, like, I I hate spirit gum so much. It works really well, but oh gosh, the smell and the fumes and just the sticky feeling. I don't like sticky stuff. <laughs> Like, I'm not a fan. So, like, it works, but I'm very uncomfortable the whole time. Um, but, yeah, so in, like, the removal process, trying to get it all off, it's just, like, a yuck. It's a yuck. <laughs> not everyone is bothered by that. Uh, some people have no issue whatsoever. And to you, congrats. Um, but to some folks, yeah, that's that's a deal breaker. Um, so if there are options, right, like that, where you can use little tricks like that, um, Right. Even if there's some things where, like, they'll have strings or something, right, um, where you don't have to actually glue stuff onto you, look into those options if that's something that, that does irk you. Um, know that there are options. Look into those options. So, stuff. Okay. So, um, wigs, hairstyles, stuff like that. Um, really good thing to have is a foam head. Um, 
these you can get uh, sometimes they're at just like uh, the Dollarama, like some stores, some dollar stores. Uh, they have them at Michael's Craft Store and other types of craft stores. Um, you can get these. So basically what you would do is uh, you put the wig on. Um, I would suggest getting some uh, like sewing pins and just uh, putting them in in some places just to make sure that it doesn't slide or move while you're working on it. Um, and then you can do the styling of the wig on this, right? Uh, so if like if you're doing like braids or anything like that, even if you're you know just moving something up and putting hair clips in or whatever you're doing, right? Maybe you're doing some crazy like a uh, mohawk or there's so many options, right? If you're cutting hair, stuff like that, right? Um, these are really good. These are really good to use because um, it's gonna it's gonna be the most um, accurate thing to it being on your head. You'll get a better idea of how it's going to hang, um, how it's going to sit while it's, you know, fully out. Instead of it being just this flat thing and you're going, oh, God, I hope this, hope this will look right if I, it can, it can be quite a problem. Um, so yeah, I, please use these. <laughs> these are great. Um, but they're very light and they're very airy. So uh, be cautious of, of dropping them, <laughs> stuff like that. Uh, if you can make some random standy thing that you can stick it on cool uh but otherwise like you can even just like put it between your knees uh to stabilize it uh personal preference personal preference um yeah what i actually use for mine um i have a dress form uh that comes off from the stand and then i'll just stick it on the stand um because there's also like i have a thingy that's like adjustable so it doesn't go farther uh, then that point kind of sits on there. So, um, that's what I usually use and I'll just sit down and just do whatever I'm doing. If I'm cutting or braiding or teasing or whatever, um, that's a, a good way to, to attempt that. Uh, so yeah. Um, other things to think about, um, do not use heat based things on, um, fake hair, right? If it's more plastic based, it will melt. <laughs> um, you can get wigs that are real human hair and those you can actually style um, like regular hair. So you can use um, flattening irons and you can use crimpers and you can use um, curling irons, right? On, on those, you cannot use those on uh, the, the cheap party city, uh, super plastic, you wear it once and it gets all matted and, and ratty in one time. Um, those are the ones, do not put a curling iron onto that because it's, it's gonna melt right off. It's just, it's gonna be a mess. Um, so just be very, very careful, <laughs> understand the materials you're working with and uh, how heat reacts. Um, Cause some, that's not gonna be a possibility. Um, also, uh, if you're, if you're making cuts, um, make sure that you see how it's like done, like check the layers. Cause, uh, some cuts, if you do, you'll be able to see the netting, like the netting, uh, the netting, <laughs> um, the netting that, uh, the hair follicles are put into. Um, if you cut it wrong, it might like this whole thing might fall off and drop. And then there's a giant, uh, net of... <laughs> of stuff that's now showing, you want to be careful of that. So just actually look through the layers, um, see how it's connected. Cause it's usually done in like rows. Um, so that's also like a thing to just, um, check with. Um, doo -doo -doo. just checking, just seeing some things. Yep. Yep. Stuff, <laughs> stuff with allergies. Yep. <laughs> Be very cautious allergies. Okay. Um, doop, doop, doop. Okay. So silhouette. This is this is the cool thing I wanted to show y'all. Um, not this one. Okay. So for this outfit, right? This is my werewolf. Um, actually, let me see if I there. There we go. So uh, for for this, um, there is a secret to this. Uh, I am wearing a muscle suit. Uh, I hand stitched myself a muscle suit. Uh, so if you can see, um, so for the arms, look at the arms. Um, 
it might look like it's a big baggy arm. That's actually skin tight. Um, that is skin tight on my arm. Um, that's all the muscle suit that you can see there. Um, also, there's where the muscles are. There's a, a back muscle. Um, you can't see it on these angles, but there's a, there's a butt muscle. <laughs> um, there's the, the thigh comes up and out. So the knee looks like it's extended so that it gives you, whoop, right? That, that sort of, um, how do I, how do I explain? Um, that canine like back hinge, right? Um, so basically when I'm, I'm standing, right? It gives me this arcing thing like this down my back, my bum. Um, and then it looks like my legs are more, my knee goes down farther and it's far more raised. And then the back of the calf is like, um, it's raised and it's also like angled. So it looks like that, um, that point, like at the, almost like that, where that like ankle bit is like a dog. <laughs> it's very canine. Um, but yeah, so the whole thing is, um, to change the silhouette, all of that's to change the silhouette. So I, I don't look like a human silhouette, right? Um, so you can use costuming tricks to change what your, your silhouette is, which is a really fun, cool thing. Um, it's, it's a lot of like, it's a lot of sewing. Um, it's a lot of understanding, uh, physical sculpting kind of bits. Um, but there are some, there are some costumes that you can get, uh, store-bought, like, muscle suits and things. Um, so you can wear them underneath your costumes, um, and tailor your costumes to, to your stuff, right? Like, this costume in particular, uh, is, is custom-fitted, tailored, uh, to the muscle suit. So every single thing that you see there, uh, I, I made to fit the muscle suit that I also made, right? Um. And I think, I think that's up to, I want to say like 27 separate pieces. Um, yeah, like the whole thing is, it's pretty nuts um, how much there is actually in there. It looks simple, but it's like nonsense amounts of uh, complex. Um, but yeah, everything is like super, super intentional. Um, you can see also right on the, on the bib of the hood, um, it's the, the phases of the moon, right? Again, it's a werewolf playing around with that. Um, the 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 night belt that I that I uh, I have on there that I crocheted, uh, it glows in the dark, right? Um, which the nails actually glow in the dark. So it's it's this sort of connectivity of this is a nighttime creature, right? These are um, things that that kind of tie in. So um, think of those little things. The little details um, can actually be quite fun. And drop that. Throw my flies back up. Ooh. Okay. Um, so other things to consider, uh, right? Your silhouette. Um, also, just a side note: how I did the muscle suit is um, I got like pillow stuffing. Um, I got netting, like a netting material um, that I sandwiched it in, sculpted it, and hand stitched it all in with sculpting um, with like this thick. Um, almost like embroidery floss type of thickness stuff. Uh, and then I just, I just hand stitched it all into place and sculpted it into the shapes that I wanted. Um, there's, there's actually a specific amp garter that is extraordinarily buff, um, that I used as reference photos for the arms. So, um, it's gonna be a fun mystery. Who did I use? <laughs> See if they ever find out. So that's mysteries. But yes, I actually used the, the muscle structure of an actual amp garter who is just extraordinarily buff in his arms. <laughs> so that happened. So I have a complete not a crazy replica of a particular amp garter's arms. <laughs> so weird. <laughs> so, um, Thank you to that amp garter. Uh, your, the reference photos were extremely helpful. <laughs> um.
Um, hope it's not super weird that I have identical arms to you now as a werewolf. I, I hope that's a compliment in some weird way. Okay. So, um, again, right, you're going to think about your silhouette. Um, which can also uh, help with your physical movements, right? Your posture, if you're going to, right, um, do your physical... No, it's not John Lawrence. <laughs> Sorry, John. <laughs> it's not, it was not John. <laughs> <I know. laughs> I can tell you they're not a Canadian amp garter. There, I'm just going to give you hints along the way. <laughs> Now it's become a guessing game. Um, okay, so, uh, again, right, you can do things with your physical performance to help um, change your silhouette, but you can also use um, costuming to help, uh, to help with that too, right? Um, if you're looking for more of a bigger build, right, try stuff like and stuff right they're gonna just bulk is gonna help just give that illusion right um i'm a very tiny small person <laughs> um so when i wear things that are just like big and bulky hats make me look a lot taller than i am <laughs> um things like that you can play around with accessories i'm already skipping accessories right? um there's things that you can play around with to help um help the look and kind of complete that whole uh image of the full package right um but yeah so fabric choices also is going to be a thing that you're going to want to play with um it's going to be important that you know uh what you're doing with your monster right if it's if it's a, a court monster only you have a million options just a million options if you're gonna fight with that monster costume um you want to make sure that it's the garb is made in a specific way that you can move freely in it um you're gonna want to make sure that uh it can be washed that um it can get wet it can get dirty um there's certain things like that to consider um there's other stuff where you can do too where um like i did with my my werewolf garb um you can do things in sections so if you're concerned about um like taking uh, a lot of like leg shots like if you're gonna take a knee a bunch um you can make stuff sectional where you can just remove that piece and wear something else in that section um that you know isn't like is can get all dirty and matty and, and whatever um like i have i have alt pieces on there um that i switch up depending on uh the weather conditions of when i'm using it um so that i don't have to worry about damaging it right uh if it's pouring there's a lot of those pieces that i'm going to swap up um so it's 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 really important to know uh what you what you can and can't do. Also, if you wear a, f a fabric that gets water stained, uh, a cool tip trick you can do is uh, purposefully water stain it. Um, evenly wet the entire thing. Um, it will go a little darker on the color, but it will be even and added water won't affect it. So if you pre- uh, water stain your those fabrics uh, you don't have to worry about water staining later so shh, secrets <laughs> but also not secrets tell people <laughs> uh, yeah so just random fun tips um, it's on a lot of banners actually because um, silk essence is a fabric that I've used a whole bunch for banners uh, and yeah if you get a little bit of water on that 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 will stain so I would just I drench the whole thing before I ever use it Surprisingly, it works pretty good. Um, this, again, has been my experience so far. Um, if you do attempt stuff like that, uh, do tester pieces. Make sure that um, that uh, the way that you do it is, is even and that it is affecting the whole fabric evenly, right? Um, cut yourself off just like a square of it. Do that test. See how it affects. Uh, see if it becomes like way too dark and you don't like it. Um, Play around with stuff first. Don't ever get like, don't go like the whole bolts, right? Don't go 10 meters in and go, okay, I'm going to throw it in the bathtub. Hope this works um, without doing that tester first um, to know exactly how things are going to react and whatnot, right? Same thing with 
anything you're gonna treat, right? If you're gonna use an iron on something, do tests, um, find out how much of that material has plastic in it, how much of that's gonna melt on you. Um, always, always, always do tester things, tech your test tiles. Um, textiles, <laughs> sorry. Um, yeah, there's, there's always something in, um, in fashion school, they would have us do tactile tests. Te textile! Words! <laughs> um, where we would get a swatch and we would have to, um, we would have to, like, make it wet and talk up like, mark stains. Uh, we would have to set it on fire <laughs> um, to see, like, um, the different, um, the reactions, if it melted, if it burned. Um, yeah, there's all sorts of things. Um, so I actually have this giant, like, binder full of swatches of all these different types of textiles um, that have been treated by all sorts of uh, manipulations and things like that. Um, so I have, like, a guide that says, like, e the contents of each of these things and how they react to water or heat or, or whatever. Uh, so it's actually pretty neat. Um, but yeah, so you always want to test those first. So other things, uh, fabric choices. Consider uh, the types of fabrics that will make sense for your character. Um, if if you're if you're playing like a again, high elf, right? You're not gonna be wearing burlap. That's not gonna be a convincing portrayal. Um, consider layers. Consider um, again what you're doing with the character. Are they just like a showpiece? type of thing or are they a heavy ditcher are they uh somebody that is is it garb that you're gonna just one size fits all and you're making it so that anyone can play as this monster uh whenever you run quests right know exactly what you're doing know how you're you're tailoring it the types of fabric you're using right if you're using something where it's a one size fits all and you're expecting lots of people to be wearing it make sure you can wash it um because that gets really gross really quick i'm assuming i have not done that goodness <laughs> um though i have had loner tabards before for other stuff very much can be washed <laughs> goodness wash them wash anything that you let other people borrow wash 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 um make sure it's washable and make sure you know that it's washable before you lend it out Gross. <laughs> um yeah important things but yeah consider consider different textiles that make sense for those for those creature types um yeah yeah yeah, you just really want to look into it. You just really want to look at what makes sense for, right, if you're going to use velvets, if you're going to use furs, if you're going to use, like, um, like those, the vinyls that look like alligator skin, right, or snake skin, those kinds of things, right, the pleather and things like that. Um, the difference between um, trying to mimic uh, what skin looks like and um, what they're wearing rakes and there's that differentiation as well right um if if i'm playing you know my werewolf and i i've got all of where my skin would be showing uh has fur i'm not also going to wear a fur on top of that right especially like the same fur like i'm not gonna have a fur trimmed cloak on my werewolf fur of the same color and the same exact material because that's not gonna make sense it's like do i just have my like a double werewolf <laughs> like right you're, you're gonna want those things to make more sense right how you could do that right is maybe maybe they're really into like collecting the pelts of their enemies their fallen enemies right like make sure you have a, a fur that is a completely different color right if i were to do that right i could use this this uh which also I just want to I want to specify uh, this is not real fur this is not real fur I do not have real fur <laughs> um, yeah I have too many animals in this home I would feel very bad <laughs> um, not shaming anyone else that does those are my personal preferences uh, I only use fake fur um, it's also easier for me to, to work with and to sew with but uh, also random side tip that stuff sheds that stuff sheds so bad um understand that every time you make a cut go like this on the edges because a whole bunch of that's gonna fall out um 
also when you're sewing um you're gonna want to like pull the fur out of that area before you stitch down um and you're also gonna want to do that on the inside right uh where the fur is not let's see if i can grab a bit of this right um right you're gonna try to get it out of the way pinch it down right it's all nice and surged right surge it or or sew it with your machine down make sure this flat as possible then you're gonna go to this side and then you're gonna pluck you're gonna make sure that anything that's gotten stuck in those um in that sewing process is gonna get fluffed out right um because otherwise it's gonna get like caught in there and then it's gonna be like a really obvious thing right open it up fluff it out a lot of this is just fluffing <laughs> fluffer um but yeah so that's the thing they they will make a mess <laughs> they'll make an absolute mess um worth it in the end like there's a point where it will absolutely stop shredding um it's it's just when you're making those initial cuts and you're working with it um that's when it will will uh will shed a bit for um where those sections are but other than that it, it really won't shed after that which is really nice okay so uh and then the last bit is accessories um again i just every little bit helps just up that ante um consider things that they would have um if there's any tribal like uh beads or symbols um right if you have uh, just like a bunch of orcs that are in a tribe and and like they have some sort of talisman that they all uh wear consider something like that any sort of backstory where they're gonna have things um any sort of symbols that are important to them um right if if they like to collect the pelts of their enemies have pelts right like um there's gonna be random things there's gonna be super random things um right if if you are a noble courtly elf you might have a crown right um there's just random random little bits and it can just increase um just the overall look it could just could just bump up your garb just that bit um and layers layers are great um they also are good for temperature control uh so if you are in a situation where uh it's cold you can add more layers uh if you're in a place where it's warm you can remove layers um having having your garb um this really goes for any garb i'd say but uh, especially for for monster types um having having layers makes it more customizable and um being able to control your temperature um especially if you're doing stuff with with cowls and masks and and wigs even and hats and those types of things uh capes cloaks a lot of things that i'm wearing right now right? um it's it's going to be important that you can control your temperature um, because being in those things for long periods of time can be very uncomfortable um, and for some health conditions can be um, dangerous at times um, or it, at the very least uncomfortable. Um, so those are things to consider. Make sure that you're comfortable. Make sure that um, you are safe, uh, that you're not going to get heat stroke. Um, you're not going to get frostbite, right? Um, because it goes both ways uh if if you have um if you have a character where you've got a lot of bare skin don't play that in the middle of winter um in canada at an event called frostbite actually called frostbite <laughs> for those of you viewing this from other uh other kingdoms yeah we, we actually have an event called frostbite i'm gonna let your mind wander of why that is <laughs> um so yeah, so just consider the the environment that you're doing it in. If it's you know likely to rain, if it is likely to snow, uh, if it's likely to be uh, very humid, hot, uncomfortable, uh, if you're going to be in a lot of direct sunlight, whatever the case might be, um, you're going to have versatility. If you have layers, if you have multiple pieces that you can take stuff off, replace it with other things, um, where enough of it to to really show the monster but not enough to where it is encumbering or um uncomfortable or could get destroyed right depending on you know your situation so options right. 
and accessories. Accessories are fun. Accessories are fun and can up a look. Um, yeah, I'll just let me do this real quick. Yep. Right. Uh, here I've got the staff. Um, the gloves that I'm wearing are actually utility because I had to do um, a pyro effect. Um, it works where it's such a quick flash of of heat and fire because it crosses like a fireball. Uh, if you don't have anything on uh, covering up um, your arm when you do it, it actually singes uh, the hairs on your arm. So that's utility. But cool, nice little glove. Um, that also has, um, ah, it's so hard to see this picture. Um, there's so many layers on this garb. There are so many layers. Um, there's this rich purple skirt with this um, satin uh, matching shirt. Um, it's like flowy billowy arms. It's got the black velvet gloves. Um, then it has a, a fur, or sorry, a, a, a almost like a musketeer style um, cape that has like arm slits so it's very wavy and flowy and layery um, with the matching uh, velvet, right? It has um, this like hooded cowl thing that's made up of three different colors of, um, of, um, oh gosh, what is it called? Um, it's called cheesecloth? I think it's called that. Um, but yeah, it's this cool looking stuff you can find around Halloween a lot. Um, it's actually pretty cool. Um, so if you ever see it, Halloween, um, it's not, it's not readily available in all fabric stores. Sometimes it's literally, you can only get it around Halloween time. Um, but yeah, it's a really cool textured thing and you can get in other tones and stuff. So it's just a lots of layers and um, a lot of hand stitching. Um, but yeah, it just gives this, this cool look to it. Now, if you look, looks familiar, eh? That's the one from the witch. He's actually using it um, for this photo, right? So versatile hoods are great. Um, Hoods are really, really good also if you're doing masks, um, especially if you don't have, um, if you don't have a wig or anything like that, uh, hoods can help, uh, block off all of that, right? Uh, so that you don't see your regular human hair, <laughs> um, showing, right? Uh, cause that's gonna break it, right? You're not gonna see the strap of the mask that's gonna show that you're, that's clearly not your face. You're not gonna see the outline of the mask. It's gonna really show that it's a mask and not, you know, your face. So using hoods and cowls, right, uh, can really, really assist with that look. It can, right, it, it will focus on the mask, it'll highlight the mask, and it will hide everything you don't want them to see. So consider that also if you're doing any sort of mask work um, that can help up the ante on that. Okay. Boop. Okay, this is it. This is the end. Going to part three, and that's it. Now we're going to be closing up the class for tonight. So uh, if you have any questions uh, and you don't see it on here, um, now's the time. Start spamming those questions in. Uh, again, please tag me uh, if you can. Uh, and again, you can ask those questions in the Twitch chat here, or you can do so in the Nine Blades uh, Featured Park Night chat. I am watching both. Uh, yeah, any questions you got? Any point of anything that we've covered and anything that we haven't? Specifically, if there's anything I haven't covered that you have questions on, please, please, please ask. I'd love to know uh, if you have any questions and I'd love to answer them if I can. So do the thing, let me know. Okay, so, uh, how? After hydration, remember, hydrate. Mysterious orange bottle. Okay, combat. Let's go over combat, because this is something that a lot of folks do not consider. Uh, this is going to affect you whether you are doing a uh, NPC or, or PC role. This is going to affect you if you are playing the monster class or just portraying your monster while um, playing a standard class. 
So, um, consider these things. Uh, again, to up your game, if you want to up your game. Uh, okay, so, all of this is about believability. If you can incorporate these things into your portrayal, it will up the ante in that immersion, in that believability, and it will just up that performance. So consider these. Weapon sets. Um, if, if I am playing an elf, um, a woodland elf, or a high elf, or lots of elf options, um, bows. Bows are really good things to help with that angle, right? Uh, you're not likely going to see them with a giant great weapon, right? Uh, that's not to type, right? Also, a lot of these, again, are going to be the stereotypical things that come to mind uh, when you envision these things. Uh, remember, feel free to think outside the box. Understand that your character can be uh, not to script. It can be something that's, like, quite literally the opposite. Um, like that one Christmas uh, movie where there was an elf that wanted to be a dentist and not a toy maker, right? Understand that... Uh, that you absolutely can um, portray these differently. You can make those things, but make sure that they're conscious decisions, right? Um, if you're just doing it because you yourself, I like this weapon and whatever, right? It's not gonna up your game, right? Um, if you're gonna do something off to type, uh, try to make it a conscious decision. So, um, weapon sets, right? You're going to try to think of what's going to make sense. Uh, if you are in a situation where you cannot play the monster class um, and you want to still portray your monster and you are playing a standard class, uh, even if you are able to, to use different weapon sets, uh, you might want to just stick to whatever the restrictions of that class are, right? Um, if I am... Right, again, I'll use the example of the werewolf, right? If, if I am portraying my werewolf um, and I cannot play the monster class, I'm going to play barbarian because that's going to be the closest. Um, for barbarians, they're allowed to use shields, but werewolves are not allowed to use shields. And it wouldn't really make a lot of sense for a werewolf to use a shield. That's not really into that whole thing because they're more like attacking with their claws, right? Um, they're They're... They're only allowed to use short swords, um, and those are, are natural, um, which is to reflect that it's a claw attack, right? So um, I would then play Flow Barbarian instead of going with... Um, all right, I'm not going to use boulders, I'm not going to use other things that that class is going to allow, um, because I want to stay... Uh, as close to that monster class as I can, right? Especially if I'm trying to paragon that class, um, I'm going to want to get as close to that monster class as I can. Uh, so consider what your monster type would use, could use, um, if it's if it's a conscious choice of a weapon to decide, right? Like if you're, again, right? If you're playing a, uh, an elf, right? Um, that's not going to be their hands. That's not going to be a natural weapon. It's going to be a weapon that they choose uh, versus a creature type, right? Um, something that's not humanoid, something that's more beast-like, where their weapons are going to be natural. Uh, whatever they're using is supposed to be more reflecting uh, the type of attack that they'd be using, right? Again, a werewolf it's going to be their claws um you're going to want to pick your weapon sets to fit better with that monster uh so weapon sets um things to also consider shoes footwear um there's this thing where uh, i want to say pretty much every single other person i've ever talked to about werewolf um has talked about wanting getting stilts um, trying to get some crazy, like, thing, stilt thing, um, that they can use. That's not something that's realistic and safe to fight in. Um, I've, how I've made my, my werewolf outfit is using, um, right, costuming tricks to create that silhouette that still gives me that canine look, right? That's giving me that, that 
you know, that thing going on without me having to wear stilts, right? Um, remember that if you are doing combat at all, that you need to be able to wear something that is safe. Um, consider whatever your main footwear is, right? Maybe it's cleats. Um, you can wear spats. Uh, spats are basically like a shoe covering um, that you can hide your shoe, right? You can get, right, if you're doing like a creature thing, right, like a beastly thing, right, you can get a, you can make a fur spat or shoe covering that covers that entirely, right, and that even has claws, right, that are glued on coming out of it, right, uh, where you can't see the shoe, where it looks like just your foot. Um, and that way you're still able to wear your cleats. You can still be, have that safe, uh, footwear that is going to be good for control. Um, things that have tread, stuff like that. Um, those are things that you're going to want to consider if your monster is a combative monster, right? It's not going to be the biggest deal if you have a court monster, if you are a, a non-fighting NPC, um, or playing color, right? Um, folks that are going to not be in combat. Uh, but if you are, consider safe footwear because you are going to have to move. Uh, additionally, again, if you're working on that physical acting and you're moving around, um, you're going to want to, to be able to be comfortable and safe while you're doing so. Um, so that's, right? But again, you can wear shoe coverings, you can wear spats, there's ways to hide those, um, without having to, to go completely off in the, doing stilts, <laughs> stilts or, or other, uh, things like that. Um, so other things you can do, uh, to, to help with that portrayal in combat specifically, um, the posture of your stance in the movement that you do. Um, if you are, if you are a monster and an NPC, um, consider how, how that monster would fight, right? If you're doing a zombie, uh, you should not be just doing that, like, that fast flow movements you're a zombie, right? Uh, you can use, right, like, uh, Wunjo, uh, played a zombie for a monster mash once, uh, where he had, uh, somebody made, a, a ham, <laughs> like, this ham club, and he used that as the weapon, and would start all the way back here, then, right, like, he would, make it seem like it was so much heavier than it was, right? It's physical acting, um, but would be so slow in lumbering in that attack. Um, slow lumbering attacks can be very important if you are an NPC combatant that is not supposed to be rolling the, the PCs. If you are not supposed to be like Sword Knight level uh, monster that is just gonna wreck the field and kill everyone, you're gonna wanna play more into uh, that monster type so that you are easing up on them. Um, psychologically speaking also, uh, if you are a Sword Knight or somebody that's particularly good at stick and you're worried that uh, being beaten by a newer player uh, will will make it seem like you're not as good as you are. That's a good reason to really seriously play into the movement of the monster type. If if you're a sword knight and you are really going with with that slow lumbering thing like a zombie, right? Would they're obviously not gonna think that that's the best you can do. They're like, okay, you're clearly being the monster. That makes sense. I'm not gonna go and brag to my friends tonight that, oh, I beat the sword knight. It's very clear that they, they beat a slow lumbering zombie and we're supposed to, like, right? Um, so if that's ever a fear for you, um, if that's a thing, if it's not a <laughs> nice, um, that's a thing, right? 
play seriously into those monster types, especially if the QM is requesting that you are not playing at full strength, at full speed. Get really into that posture. Um, but there's other things too, right? Um, consider for archer shooting styles. Uh, if I'm a high courtly elf, right, I'm going to want to use good proper position. I'm going to want to do chest up, nice clean things. I'm not going to be running around doing pot shots, right? Like, right? I'm not going to do the, the, the hand quiver, fucking quick, like those quick shots, right? I'm not going to do pot shots. That's not, that's not what a high elf would be doing. That would be below them, right? Um, but if I'm, if I'm like a wood elf, if I'm a really just scouty elf, I'm not going to be doing super, you know, fancy, super formal. I'm going to be running around. I'm going to be doing those pot shots. I'm going to be holding those in my in my hand. I'm going to do the hand quiver position. And I'm going to do pot shots. I'm going to be low to the ground. I'm going to be low to the earth. I'm going to be super in it. Um, so consider that. Consider your stance, your posture when you're fighting, right? Um, if I'm, again, with the werewolf, right? I'm hunched over. I'm going to flow, but I'm going to do it more like these are my claws, right? I'm not going to like... Right? I'm not going to do this weird, like, I'm not going to fight like me. I'm, I'm not going to, I'm not going to fight you like I'm fencing you, right? I'm, I'm not going to, to do this thing where it doesn't look like that can be a, a shot wielded by my hands, right? So very much consider your posture and your stance uh, when, in the movements that you're doing, right? Uh, I, I'm not going to be doing these, like, Right, I'm. I'm not gonna. Right, I'm not gonna do a high cross on you because why? Why would a werewolf go? Oh, come over here and claw at your shoulder, right? Um, I'm either gonna just do a straight down or I'm gonna just do a sidewind, right? Like I'm gonna just, right? Um, I'm. I'm not gonna try to get a dark side. I'm not gonna try to do, uh, you know, uh. <laughs> There's lots of things I'm not gonna try to do, um, because those are not gonna be realistic to my monster type, right? Um, they happen, they happen. It's, it's right. Uh, depends on, depends on like what you're trying to achieve. Uh, if you are trying to win a, uh, a war master tournament, maybe don't do so portraying a monster. <laughs> uh, do not do the things that will, uh, restrict your actual success in winning. Um, right. These are just options for, um, increasing the immersion, increasing the believability, um, and the challenge of really getting into, uh, and portraying your monster as best that you can, um, being observant of their muscular structure, their physical structure, um, the types of movements that they can and cannot perform, um, depending on their physical state, right? Um, if you see a zombie run at you, that's got to be a very specific type of zombie, right? Um, yeah, but if you're doing that slow and lumbering thing, you're not going to start walking slow at them and all of a sudden start, right? Like, that, that, I'm not going to believe you're a zombie if, you're, if you do the slow lumbering walk and then all of a sudden start shooting really quick at me. Um, right? Things to consider. Um... And right, I'm gonna, the meta, right? It's the understand uh, if you are an NPC, um, if the QM wants you to not kill them all, if if the QM wants you to ease up, or if they want you to to be more menacing, if they want you to be a real viable threat, if you are the boss at the end, right? Uh, and they want you to give it their all, right? Or at halfway point, they just go, okay, like you're really destroying them, ease it up a little bit, right? Um, it's that meta knowledge, it's that inside knowledge of, okay, I am not going to fight them like me. I'm not going to fight them all out. And my intention, my purpose here is not to kill them all. Um, it's going to be super, super important to know what your goal is uh, and what you're supposed to be doing. Right. Um, understand if that you're hired for a role, do the role that you're hired for, that you signed up for, and that you agreed to. Um, 
because again, it's that type of thing that can ruin a quest, right? Uh, if if you're playing a farmer, um, and it's a small, tiny roll, and it, to move on to the next thing, uh, that you're like an evil farmer that's been poisoning the land, and uh, they have to get the poison away from you uh, to find an antidote to save everyone. Uh, and the whole point of the whole entire quest is beating up this farmer really quick to get the thing and move on. And you're a sword knight, and you are killing all of them, and they cannot beat you. Because you are, like, the best fighter on the field, and they can't, they can't beat you. That's, that's not a good, uh, NPC. That's, that's just you being you. That's not a believable, uh, lowly farmer with the pitchfork. Uh, that has never been trained, and is just gonna go, Hey, hey, stay away, oh, stay away, stay away. Um... So it's going to be really important that you know the level that you should be fighting at. Um, so that's my that's my biggest advice for that sort of combat stuff. Um, so that's that's it. That's all I got. Um, now I'm going to open it up for any questions. If anyone has any questions having to do with monster portrayal at all, this is the time. We're in the Q&A. If you've got something, please let me know. Again, uh, feel free to put those questions, tag me in them if you can, uh, either in our, our Twitch chat here or in our featured park for the Nine Blades. So either way, again, it's going to be 20 second delay, so... Uh, I'm going to do the traditional 20 second silly dance, as is tradition. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Doing silly dance, doing silly dance. And the jazz hands for Rajavia, tradition. Do 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 do. I can see typing. <laughs> I can see typing. I will wait for typing. Again, any questions at all? Uh, there are no bad questions. Um, I am I am here to help. Uh, I want to help, so please, please, please give me those questions if you got them. There we go. Uh, do you feel like monsters are unbalanced for battle games? Um. Currently, yes. Um, and and it's not even... Sometimes it's not even what the actual balance is. Um, it can be a lot of just other folks don't knowing um, the special traits and abilities that monsters have. Because uh, that can be a huge um, unbalancing mechanism. If you have a bunch of new players that are just trying to, you know, and struggling to learn all of the interactions with the main, um, the main classes, the standard classes, uh, throwing in a whole bunch of spells and abilities that they've never interacted with, have never heard of, and they're like, I've been studying this, this isn't in here, right? Because it's not in the rulebook itself, it's, like, in these side things, um, that can really, really throw newer players. It can also, like, throw... Just folks that aren't used to monsters, period. Um, I myself have been really, really frustrated going up against folks that are playing monsters that just do not communicate at all what they have, and you don't know until you've hit them with something. And and then they'll just be like, immune. And you're just like, what else are you immune to? Oh, I, is there literally anything I can do to you? I have nothing else. I. So I guess I just either sit here and die or just hope someone else figures out what can affect them and knowing that it's probably not me like right that can be super super frustrating um and anytime you have miscommunication you have a breakdown in communication uh that can really affect um it can really affect the mentality of the players it can cause uh really salty emotions and feelings and just a bad time um you don't you don't want to walk away from a field uh feeling cheated you don't want to walk away from a field feeling frustrated and confused right um or watching others go through and experience that right um you don't want to be a monster that wins because 
everyone didn't know what was happening and you used a bunch of things that they didn't know and then everyone's just moody and upset in like you won but it doesn't feel good right you don't want to be in that situation either uh so i would say that there is there's a level of unbalance just because of the lack of knowledge um and and a lot of times uh i'll I'll see folks that will play them and not really understand uh, how much isn't understood and uh, not communicate uh, what their immunities are and what their abilities and their traits and um, what they're doing to affect others and what others would need to do to affect them. Um, I feel like that, just the secrecy of it, uh, can be unbalancing as, as it is, let alone any sort of... Um, actual imbalances where there's just the amount of abilities and spell they have is just like absurdly unbalanced which some monsters that is the case so i would say for both of those yes um okay so i have a couple more questions here and here so um let's go here what would you consider a player wanting paragon uh would want to look at doing. Sorry if that was covered earlier. Um, yeah, I covered a little bit earlier, but again, um, what I'm gonna say is uh, for folks that are looking for, for Paragon color, or Paragon color, um, also Paragon color, um, but monster. For, for folks that are looking for, for Paragon monster, I think um, good things to note would be um, Their willingness and wanting to play monster, um, if, if they have the opportunity to do it, to do it, um, to, to, you know, put the conscious efforts into their wardrobe, right? Uh, if they have one monster in particular, they, they really just like go all out on, uh, they might want to have some other, um, pieces that they can use, uh, common, you know, monsters that are used a whole bunch, um, that they have preset kits that if uh, if those monsters are needed, right, they can go and fill that role. Um, having their own stuff, right, uh, that they can portray, being able to portray other monsters, right. Um, having the knowledge of the specialty um, spells and abilities and things that monsters do have. Um, because there's, there's a bunch of random things that uh, are not... Um, they're not in the rule book. They're not um, seen in uh, other standard classes. Um, I would say also the importance of portraying um, their monster type even when they can't play monster. Um, I've seen a lot of folks go, okay, well, I can't play monster, so guess I'm just a human archer now, right? Like throwing up your hands and just giving up. Don't give up. No, um, find the the standard class that's closest that has uh, the same types of spells and abilities and traits, uh, and and play those up. Show that you have um, the knowledge in the strategic use of them. Um, even if you can't play the monster type, you can still play with the things that the monsters get. Um, additionally, right, a lot of it goes into that portrayal. Um, being able to be believable as that mass, that monster type, um, having, you know, being able to loud and proud kind of, um, being okay with things that other folks might feel self-conscious with, right? Um, being able to get into that physicality, uh, that, that acting, the physical acting, um, that is really required, uh, to portray monster properly. It's a lot of physical acting. It's a lot of choices that you, that you really have to be very conscious of. Um, and also to be believable and, and heighten that immersion that you are not you, right? Um, you've got to really go off type to be able to, to pull that off. So I think it's important that um, they still play, portray their monster, um, even if they can't play the class. Um, I, I think it's going to be important for that brand recognizability. It's it's really good to, again, right, like I was saying before, Paragons should be able to walk onto a field without a sash and everyone knows what they're playing. Um, for for somebody that's trying to Paragon color, or color, I keep going with color. Um, uh, somebody that's trying to uh, portray a monster, 
right? If they're always dressed up as some sort of creature, some sort of monster class, um, my my head's gonna go, oh, they're a monster, right? If, if, if they are no th known throughout every land and they go to events and they're just always like, you know, fully kitted as a monster, they go and you know that they're gonna be, they're gonna, you're gonna see them somewhere in that quest and they're gonna be believable as heck. Um, that's what I'm looking for. That's, I wanna, I wanna believe it and I wanna see it and I wanna see them commit to it, uh, and, and devote to it, right? Um, but yeah, it's sort of like a side thing, right? Uh, folks that play color can also portray monsters. <laughs> Immersion. Um, yeah, okay, so next question. Uh, I'm a little confused on this question. Um, how would you rate your ability to compare monsters, stats, blocks? Um, could I get a clarification on that? I'm a little confused on the state blocks. I want to make sure I'm understanding that correctly. Yeah, sorry, I'm, I'm not entirely certain on what the question is. Could you, uh, restate it? Um, possibly? Appreciate it. Uh, I'll go to your next question, though. Uh, do you feel that all monster paragons, uh, should shoot for, for garb as good as yours as a minimum or maybe another route, uh, is a huge wide range of costumes to pull from? Okay, so, uh, to be clear, I am a serpent knight. Um, I am not expecting... I realize my belt, you can't see from here, hello, yes. Okay, I am a Serpent Knight. Um, I am not expecting um, them to be able to to garb or do um, 3D, um, 3D art um, in their their portrayals or, um, or even my, like, training with uh, performance. Um, I am not expecting you to be me. I am expecting you to be the best you you can be. Um, I uh, try. <laughs> like, the whole thing is, is I, I want to see you try. I want to see you put in an effort. I want to see, um, what, what is your limit? What is the best you you can be? Um, I, I think my, my monster garb is, is best me I can be. Um, so no, I, I would not say so. Um, I would say that there are, however, simpler, much easier ways, uh, to go about such things that are really easy to do, uh, that look really good. So, um, I'm gonna give you, uh, this example again, right? Um, this, this is convincing. This is good. Um, he made one thing here. Uh, he made only one thing here. Um, and made it wasn't even made right it was painted right uh he painted this mask uh everything else is not something he made um i made that staff <laughs> uh i made that hood um those pants are um i i think some cut up pants from goodwill uh but everything else is the morph suit right you don't have to make any of the stuff that you wear yourself. Uh, I'm not expecting you to be a master crafter. I'm not expecting you to be able to craft all these things yourself. Um, talk with your friends. Some folks might just have old things that they're just willing to give you, quite honestly. Uh, you might be able to commission things if, uh, if you have the finances to do so. Um, again, there's, there's a crazy amount of stuff you can do with just thrift store shopping. Um, that's actually, like, super legit. Uh, super, super cheap things, uh, that you can get from Thrift Source. That's actually, uh, definitely a place I go for. Um, actually, also, oh my gosh, around Halloween time is huge, because there's some really cool masks that they have around those times. Um, I know Woonjo has, like, an absurd amount of masks of a whole bunch of types, because he has them for his NPCs, because... Uh, he's the master smith. He runs quests like crazy. Um, and they're really good, right? Um, having a good solid mask and then just little stuff around it can really, really work. A lot of it, 
um, I would say, uh, comes from your portrayal. The portrayal is going to be the biggest thing. So, right, I hope I've given enough tips of, of ways that uh, you can always up that game. Um, but it's a lot of uh, active, active choices and practice and commitment. Um, but yeah, right, again, morph suits are surprisingly really, really useful and cut down on um, preparation time that you need to do yourself, right? All of all those wraps you see is part of the the morph suit. That's not even that's not even physical real life things. Um, all the green, right? Other than his face, uh, that's the morph suit. He didn't paint his skin. He didn't do any cool highlights with makeup and no, didn't have to do any of that. It's that whole entire costume is a morph suit, a mask some cheap pants and, and a hood, right? But the whole look is there. What's, what is particularly good about Woundra's performance as Gumjaw is his physical acting. His, the voice that he uses, the posture that he goes with, the movement, the commitment to, to sticking in character and sticking with those positions and the voice that he does, right? It, oh, there we go. Morph suit. Hang on, let me take that down. Boop. Right? It's a morph suit. Um, it's just a thing a ling, right? That's that's it. Instant skin, right? Like, aha. Hey my goblin. <laughs> right? So you can see how, right? Um whoop. all those bandages are not actually there, they're just part of the costume, right? But all that texture is so good on there. Um, I have a morph suit um, for for skeleton stuff. I've got like this full body uh, thing for skeletons. Um, so that's my morph suit. This is his, right? Um, but yeah, these are surprisingly really, really good. Um, right, again, that's not something that he crafted. That was something that he got it. I think it was like Party City or... Party City or um, Spirit of Halloween or something. I think, like, right, uh, also, like, things, like, things to, to note is, like, when things are on, like, super sales and stuff, um, right after Halloween, everything gets absurdly cheap. Um, I, right, I don't, I don't want to just, like, promos for different stores, right? Um, but it is, it is widely known that, um, Spirit of Halloween on the day after Halloween has, like, I think it's like 50 to 75% off of its, of its stuff. Um, yeah, like every year I, I go and just, uh, I just buy that store empty. Except this year, <laughs> all my things are not my things because I didn't get them. Um, but yeah, right. Like it's just, there's, there's lots of options out there. So, um, gonna put this out there if if you ever want to just chat and and want solutions like looking uh for for uh quick easy cheap ways to do stuff right uh what kind of extra like accessories to to bump um the visual aspect of things or how to um how to up a performance um right stuff like that also again hoods if you got masks wear a hood it covers everything else it really helps um I'm, I'm down, right? I'm, I'm in the featured park night, Monday to Friday, uh, from 6 to 10, usually an absurd amount later. Um, uh, especially when I'm doing uh, office hours where there's, uh, I have open, um, just one-on-one -on -one time for folks. I'm here, I'm available, I'm willing. Um, I'd love to help out if I can. Uh, so yeah, yeah, come, come to the Nine Blades. Uh, if, if I can help you, I will. So, uh, that, that would be my suggestion on that. Um, take some in the advice, uh, from this class. Uh, also, um, please note, and I'm kind of the preface of all of my classes. These are the things that work well for me. These are the things that, uh, I have learned along the way. Um, these are not the only way to do them. They're a way to do them. If something else works better for you, 
go for it. Um, it's important to to know your options, to know that there are options, um, that what works for, for one person is not going to work for another person. It may work perfectly for somebody else, or it might work a little bit for somebody else, right? You can pick and choose things, take the advice that, that you like and works for well for you, uh, and other things you go, no, not for me, um, which is fine, right? Find your things, explore, and, and look at what works best for you, what you like, um, and take take what works and what doesn't, right? Sort through it and understand that it is okay to be different. It's okay to try different things. Um, I will not be offended, <laughs> right? Uh, you do not have to be me. I, I want you to be a better you, not, a, not me or a better me. Um, I want you to be the best you you can be. So don't be me. Okay, I hope that helps. <laughs> um, doop, 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 doop. Okie doke. Um, the past doop, 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 is, that's not a question. Blah, blah, blah. Oh, yeah. Uh, this ends up being a, a very interesting, timely thing. Uh, V9 is, is currently uh, doing their, their survey right now um, that covers uh, roleplay, quests, magic items, and monsters! The thing we're doing here. How convenient. Um... I'm going to be perfectly honest with you, this wasn't even intentionally planned. Um, that just happened to be a super, super convenient um, coincidence. So, there we go. Now that we've had this this monster class, uh, go check out... Um, <laughs> go check out that uh, the link that Gum Gumjaw just put in there um, for the survey. Have yourself a good say in this in this matter. Um, V9 will will only be a game for all of us if all of us have our voice heard, and um, we contribute as a community. So be sure you guys do those surveys. Um, and if you're interested in monster stuff, this is the one. <laughs> do the thing. <laughs> okay, good stuff. Um, doop 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 doop. Yes. Okay. You're looking forward to playing Monster once COVID is over. Yes. <laughs> you know, um, I'm, I think it's awesome. Uh, yes. I'm also, actually me too. I, uh, I'm very, I'm very eager to get farther into it. Um, I've, I've been on my anti-paladin, uh, push for, for so long, many years. Um, and now that I do have, um, my Paragon in that class, uh, I do want to explore and, and play more with Monster. <laughs> I, want to, I want to have more fun with Monster, so I'm also very eager to to get back into it uh, once COVID is over, so. Yay! Let's all play Monster now. <laughs> or portray Monsters as standard classes. Also, also good and viable. Including color. I'm just gonna, I'm gonna throw that one in there as much as I can, Bonnie. <laughs> Okay, um, yes, uh, can confirm, um, four credits again, if you guys haven't taken credits yet, you've been here for almost three hours, what, <laughs> um, please feel free, um, have yourself a credit on behalf of the Kingdom of the Nine Blades, um, y'all earned it, <laughs> um, so if you go and, uh, sign in on the featured park, um, text, Again, uh, use the ampbot if you if you have a kingdom discord. Uh, you most likely have uh, the ampbot. If so, you sign in the same exact way you do there. Um, yeah, get yourself a credit. Okay. Um, and I saw your uh, uh, rugby warrior one two three. I saw your comment about um, stat blocks uh, that we're gonna look over afterwards. Yep, sounds good. Um, doop, doop, doop. Any other questions I can answer for y'all before we close up for the night? No, I've talked your ear off for, for quite some time. 
Um, Y'all are amazing who have lasted this long. Oh my goodness. Seriously, grab yourself a credit. <laughs> so, so well deserved. Um, yeah. Good stuff. Again, uh, I'm going to go for, for the last, last questions if anyone's got them. Doop, doop, doop. Doop, doop, doop. Look it over at these different cats. Red, happy, shifty, looky dance. <laughs> oh, Bonnie, thank you. <laughs> I appreciate you. Okay. Um, doop, doop, doop. Yeah, it, it really doesn't feel like three hours. Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll be honest, uh, these classes tend to, to, to get to this, uh, two to three hour mark, um, and it never feels like it. It never feels like it, and I never plan it to go this long. <laughs> uh, I, um, my biggest thing is, uh, having, having these videos, I want to just kind of, uh, give all the information on a thing that I've got. Uh, I don't want to leave stuff out. I find that when I when I teach for, for events and things like that where I have a time block, um, there's a lot that uh, I can't go over in that amount of time. So there's always, there's always information missing. There's always uh, things that I can't cover um, due to time constraints. So I, I try to hit like the, the biggest, you know, main topics that I can, but there's a lot of extra stuff that that I can't get in there um but yeah so it's uh it's really nice to have my own platform without um without restrictions because that means that I can I can literally go this is everything I know on this if you ever wanted my my encyclopedic knowledge of a thing this is the place because it'll have everything like I'm out of ideas of things to talk about other than answering questions. That's how much I've put into this, right? Um, I prep these, like, I'm doing them bi-weekly now uh, for two reasons. Uh, I, I'm currently queen of the nine blades, so... Oh, the workload <laughs> is it's quite extensive. Um, lots of meetings and um, work. There's just a lot of work to do, so uh, making sure that I'm not overloading myself. Um, I got enough spoons to get through um, through my week. Uh, but also, uh, right, burnout is the thing I'm trying to prevent. Uh, but also it gives me enough time to really prep for these, right? Um, I, I, I write everything out first. Um, and then right now I'm, I'm adding in slides and photos and things, right, that I have to prep and type up and um, edit and do stuff all all ahead of time so um, the more the more I put into these um, I'm going to say professionalism <laughs> um, the the more time it takes right so uh, I do prep these for for the full amount of time um, oh, excuse me and uh, being able to to have have that amount of time and, and freedom to be able to to go as long as I, as I need to, to, to get all of that out. <laughs> um, I do find that the majority of, uh, the folks that do watch, um, my videos and, uh, you know, are, are folks that are watching afterwards, right? Um, I find that my counts are going up, uh, significantly after the live streams. So, um, I don't know if they're binging it <laughs> or if they're watching it, like, in, in sections, um, but yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll have X amount of folks that'll be here live, like all of you five folks right here. Um, and then I, I will get exponentially uh, more, more views after. Um, so it is important for me to be able to, to have these recorded and to have them all in the same spot that they can be watched uh, much later down the line. So a lot of this is just creating the content and having it out there. Yeah. But yes, <laughs> doesn't feel like three hours. It's really kind of crazy to think that it has been. Um, so yeah. Uh, other than that, if uh, installing for time secretly to make sure that all the questions got in. So now that that rant is over and uh, I have no more.
time to stall. Uh, I think that we'll start closing this up. Um, again, be sure that you grab your credit before we shut that down for the night. Uh, I'm looking at probably 11 p.m. I'll shut down the attendance, so uh, you will now have the next 15 minutes <laughs> uh, to go and grab that attendance if you would like it. <laughs> oh my goodness, all of the gifts in, uh, in our Discord right now. I appreciate y'all so much. <laughs> Oh, goodness. Um, can I send you a monster stat block uh, for your opinion on it? Absolutely. Go for it. Yes. Um, you can send it to me either through PM on Discord or um, on my Facebook. Uh, my Facebook name is Amy Salvador. So either one, whichever one works for you. But yeah, I'm good for it. Let's do it. Whoop, whoop. Okay. Um... Again, if anyone has any other questions, please uh, feel free to message me. Let me know. Um, and again, I, I'm always around on, on that Discord. Uh, so if you ever want to talk, come hang out in the Nine Blades. Everyone is welcome. <laughs> as as our numbers just... I've done that a couple of times and all of a sudden it's like tons of out of kingdom visitors and it's wonderful. So do it. Raid. <laughs> Okay, so I think that'll be it for tonight. I want to thank you so very much, everyone that has been here for for the live streaming of this. Thank you to anyone that is watching this in the future. I very much appreciate you. Um, again, this has been How to Betray uh, Monsters, even when you're not playing Monster. Um, I've been Admiral Ann Cash. So uh, thank you again for, for joining us for this rendition of Admiral's Academia and hope to see you next time. Uh, be well, look out for each other, and have yourself a good evening. <laughs>